third and three for the Bulldogs from their own 19-yard line. Curtis operates out of the shotgun, takes the snap. He tosses it left, and the Bears are going to come up with a third down stop. Ryan Putman made the tackle back at the 20-yard line, and so the Bears defense comes up big and holds Bryant to a three and out deep in its own territory. Great job there by Ryan Putman, the junior. Came off his block nicely right there. Came up the field, did a nice job of really kind of wrapping him, taking him down. If he didn't do that, he would have probably gotten a first down because there was no one else there to stop him. So on fourth down and two, the Bulldogs will bring their punting unit onto the field. Gavin Rowley is the punter. And back deep to receive for the Bears is Danny Gemmel. Bears should get this in good field position right here as Gemmel's got his feet at the 45. Gemmel the junior from Andover, Mass. Here's the punt. Gemmel runs to the near sideline, makes the catch, and is run out of bounds on the Bryant sideline at the 40-yard line. You know, that was a good Runs series right there the by the Brown Bear defense. That first, first series, they were out there. A lot of third-down conversions by the Bryant offense. That's a big stop right there to get out from third down. So 6.23 to go in the first quarter, and the Bears will come out on offense for the second time today. Their first drive ended with a turnover in Bryant territory. And we're going to see multiple quarterbacks on the field right now as McGovern will operate in the slot to the left with E.J. Perry in the shotgun. First and 10, Brown. They'll start this drive at the 40-yard line. They motion McGovern, fake the handoff to him. Back to pass is Perry. Steps up, runs to his right, looking to throw. Now he's scrambling, and he's going to pick up a few yards before being hit and driven back at the 43-yard line. They'll spot it closer to the 44, so give Perry a gain of... Almost four yards in the carry. Now well, they'll put it back at the 43, give them a gain of three. Good Bruce coverage downfield by the defenders, cornerbacks and safeties and by Bryant right the there. Second Good down, job by Perry, though, there to get out of the pocket when he did and be able to pick up three yards. Yeah, you just get that feel that you had when you watched his Uncle James quarterback. If something's not there, he'll make a play somehow, some way. On this play, they hand it off to Mike McGovern. And McGovern's dropped for a loss Number of three and a half McGovern yards in just inside the 40-yard line. So the Bears are going to have the well, they'll the spotted at the 39, one, a loss of four. Loss It'll be right. third and 11. A little trick play, play right there, bringing third McGovern down, down the, on the inside of the quarterback. And Perry just kind of dovetailed it to the front. You thought he was going to roll out to here to the near side, and he didn't. But didn't fool the middle linebacker from Bryant. He was able to get up inside. Untouched. 5-10 to go, first quarter. Brian 3, Brown nothing. Bears have it third and 11 on their own 39-yard line. E.J. Perry out of the shotgun. Two receivers left, one to his right. Bryant with the blitz. Perry able to pick it up. Rolls to his left. Now he runs with the ball, and he's going to pick up the first down. Oh, he's hit hard in Brian territory down at the 45-yard line. But he pops right back up, and look, he is fired up. That's a competitor right there. Did he take a hit? Coming across the middle, gets the first down, and you're right, Scott. He just Gainers popped right up, looked at the Bryant sideline, and gave him the rah. Like, that's, you're not going to take me out of the game. That's a Perry. That <laughs> is a Perry. The very definition of one. First and 10, Brown at the 45 yard line of Bryant, handoff McGovern, and he's dropped for a loss Number back 10, at the 41. And you know something, when he got out of that pocket, he was taking pressure from the blind right side. He felt the blind Richard side Bukele. pressure, was able to peel Lost off of that of defensive Second end down, and then find his way up the field and run north-south. Second down and 11 for the Bears at the Bulldogs 41-yard line. There's three receivers to the far side right. Jackson, Gemmel, and Sutton. To the near side left, tight end Chris Boyle. The back is Alan Smith. And he sits to the right of E.J. Perry, who operates out of the shotgun. Perry takes the snap, looks right. Now he looks, fires right to Dimitri Jackson. He makes the catch at the 40, and he's going to be driven back at about the 36-yard line of the Bulldogs. So a good job there by Dimitri on the catch and run. It's going to bring up a third down and one for the Bears. i got to believe they're going to be in four-down territory here on the road right here, knowing how aggressive Coach Perry is. But nice route there by Dimitri Jackson, the senior out of New Hampshire. Such a great kid, too. Great young man has been in this program for four years. Those same three receivers now split out to the near side left as Perry operates out of the gun on third and one, hands it to Allen Smith. He bounces off a tackle and dives across the 35 for a first down. That was all Allen Smith 
picking up the one yard needed for a first down. Sophomore did it all in his legs right there, got up in the hole, kept his feet moving. They didn't wrap him, and he did a spin running north-south and got himself loose just enough to get to the first down. 3.15 remaining here in the first. 3 nothing. Bryant leads Brown, but the Bears on the move. First and 10 inside the Bulldogs, 35. Two receivers to the near side left and one to the far side right. Perry out of the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off to Bolton, the tailback, and Bolton's going to drive it forward for a gain of a Number couple down to the 32-yard line of Bryant. Nice job in the middle there by the, the right lineman on that right side, Lynch. All soft. Did a play. nice job right there down, sealing it up. Eight. Bolton drives his legs, picks up a second. Three-yard gain makes it second down and seven for the Bears. Perry will operate out of the gun. Two receivers left. The one receiver to his right is the backup quarterback, McGovern. He now motions into the backfield. Perry takes the snap, fakes the handoff, fires middle behind Harry to makes the catch at the 15, at the 10, at the 5, and he is tackled just short of the goal line, but Perry's it'll be first and goal to go Brown at the one-yard line of the Bulldogs. L.J. Harriet does a post route over the middle line. and full stride, first reaches back with that Brown. right arm and pulls that football in. And now the Bears will have it first down goal to go at the Bryant one-yard line. They'll bring in Smith as the tailback gemmel and jackson are the wide receivers split out to the near side left the tight end boyle the freshman lines up to the right first and goal to go brown they have it at the bulldogs one yard line perry out of the shotgun takes the snap hands the ball off to smith he drives forward but is driven back as he reaches the line of scrimmage it was an all-out blitz right there by Bryant. They sent everyone between the tackle guard gaps. Not enough guys to block. Rolled right into it. Actually, they're going to put it down as a loss of two to the three-yard line where it'll be second down goal to go Brown from the three. Jackson and Gemmel split out to the left. Smith the tailback. Perry motions Jackson. Hands it to Jackson. Running right of the jet sweep. He cuts it up and is dropped for a loss back at the four-yard line. See, they're trying to spread them out right there. Bryant's got seven guys in the box that play just Bryant took a little too long to develop they were able to scrape to that far side so now it's going to be third down goal to go brown at the four yard line of the bulldogs as we're under a minute to play here in the opening quarter go to a major personnel change here as three new receivers come in and a running back boils in prowls in lj harry comes in logie comes in Bolton comes in. The play clock is down to eight, and they still haven't gotten the play in, and I think they're going to call a timeout right here with 34 seconds to go in the first. So we'll get a timeout on the field with 33 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 3-0 Bryant, but the Bears knocking on the door. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. This has been a good confidence booster for this offense. they got to knock it in here. I'm sure that's what they want. They don't want to settle for a field goal, but they really have driven the ball down the field here. They've made third down conversions. They've made some long passes. They've made some very good runs. You know, they've, they've done a really good job here offensively in this series. So the offense still on the sideline. I think this play is under review, Scott. There was, the refs are over here uh, dealing with the uh, NEC guys looking at something. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's a spot of where the ball needs to be spotted or. It 
See if the official gives us any indication what that was all about. Well, I don't know if he understands that his microphone either isn't on or they haven't potted it up in the press box here at Bryant. In any event, the scoreboard still reads third down goal to go Brown on the four yard line of Bryant. 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. And now Bryant bringing its defense back over to the near side. Was that by chance the end of the quarter? I mean, I'm not sure. It's just a just a lengthy timeout. Not quite sure what the situation is here. But this is a, a rather lengthy timeout. Well, some sort of a review here because they came over here with the NEC officials here on the sidelines and talked. He's trying to speak to us, but obviously he can't. He doesn't have his mic on or it's not working properly. Well, the Bears offense now coming back out onto the field, as is the Bryant defense. We have 33 seconds It'll to go in the first quarter. It's third Bryant. down goal to go for the Bears from the four-yard line of the Bulldogs. Perry has Andrew Bolton in at tailback standing to his left. Two receivers to the left and one to the right. Perry motions Harriet into the backfield, fakes the handoff to him, back to pass, looking, fires to the corner of the end zone, caught, Boylan, touchdown Bears. Great play reaction right there. Fake handoff to LJ Harriet and EJ Perry Scott floats Taylor the ball over the, the Bryant touchdown. defender into Boyle's hands. What a touch he had there. Scott Boylan with his first touchdown reception of the season for EJ Perry. His first touchdown pass as a Brown quarterback. It's 6 0 Bears. And now Dawson go for it, John, to try to make it a 7 3 lead. Gofrich out of the hold of Mike McGovern to try to put the Bears on top by four. Good snap. The hold is down. Gofrich kick is on the way, and it is good. Is good. 27 seconds to go in the first. We'll keep it right here. It's now 7-3 Brown. So Gofrich tees the ball up once again at his 35-yard line, set to kick it deep to Bryant's Nisavochia and Hunter Hill. 7-3 Brown, 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Good kick by Gofrich again. Nisavochia backs up, takes it a yard deep in the end zone. He'll take it out this time. At the 5, at the 10, at the far side, 15-yard line, and he is going to be knifed down at the 17-yard line. Good special return. teams tackle made there by Cooper DeVoe, the freshman. Cooper DeVoe did a really nice job Brown's there on the outside. He's the last guy gets around the corner. Cooper He's going DeVoe. off to the races, but he kept his body, did a nice job, broke down. Nice tackle right down around the legs, right. not arm tackling him. Came in with the shoulder. The Good job by the freshman on special teams, making a name for himself. 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. 7-3 Brown leading here at Bryant. Season opener for the Bears. Bulldogs will take over. They'll start this drive first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. Out of the shotgun, it's Curtis. Looks right, fires right, dropped by Nisavochia. It's incomplete. incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Second he was down, wide 10. open, too, right here. Just a little quick little curl route, seven yards down. Tried to run before he caught the football. Second down and 10, Bryant. They have it at their own 18. Back to pass. Curtis has a man. It's complete to Hunter Hill, and Hill's catch. Curtis just short of the first down marker to out to the 27-yard line. Gain of nine on the play. Third down, one. And on the carry, the third down and short. They give the ball to Dorbor. He picks up the first down on the final play of the quarter. And after one here in Smithfield, our score is the Brown Bears 7, the Bryan Bulldogs 3. Back with second quarter action in just a moment from Learfield IMG College. This is Brown Bears football. Fires to Nisavocia to the near side, and Nisavocia is going to be tackled out of bounds at about the 32-yard line by Davis back. Back did a nice job coming up from the safety job right there. Cena the was the first one Second on it, did a great job. Tripped him up a little bit. 
Second down and nine, a gain of one on the catch by Nisavocia. Second down and nine, Bryant at their own 32-yard line. Curtis out of the shotgun, motioning a receiver to split out a little farther than he was. Curtis fakes the handoff. He's going to fire it near side, and it is incomplete, intended for Anthony Frederick, who's Curtis outstretched the left hand, just couldn't pull it in. Good coverage right there. Got a little down. step on the scene there, the cornerback here for Brown on this side, but it was all man-to-man -man coverage Brown had. Did a great job locking into his shoulder pad. Nick Messina, the sophomore, in coverage. No Charlie Dallape out there right now. Second, uh, third and nine for the Bulldogs. Fake the handoff. Curtis steps up in the pocket. He's going to be dropped. Michael Hoyt was the first one to grab him and bring him down. Also in on the tackle for the Bears was the freshman Josh O'Feely. O'Feely did a nice job on a blitz right there from the cornerback position. Got up the field, but Hoyt did a great job pressuring and breaking the pocket down. So Gavin Rowley will have to punt the football away again for the Bryant Bulldogs. Spurs defense has done a nice job. They've settled into this game well also. They really have. They put some pressure on the quarterback. They're coming up the field. They're playing hard north-south football. And now we have a delay of game. No, what do we have a timeout? Seven seconds run the play clock. Not sure what the whistle was for. Referee threw his flag far side. Looked at the play clock, uh, excuse me, the play clock still has seven seconds on it, so I'm not sure. There is no foul. The problem is the way the sun is glaring to the far side, you can't really see that uh, play clock that well at that side, so it looks like it went down to zero. Gotcha. With the other side, it's, it's bright because it's kind of in the shade. Gotcha. So they reset the play clock. They're resetting the game clock to 13.39 as they also reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Rowley will punt it for Bryant. Back deep to receive for the Brown Bears, standing at his own 35-yard line, the junior Dan Gemmel. Rowley gets the snap, gets his leg into this one. Good high spiraling punt, driving Gemmel back to his own 25. Gemmel makes the catch, and he runs far side at the 30. At the 35-yard line, Gemmel at the 40. At the 45-yard line, and out to midfield. Dan Gemmel on the return. Danny Gemmel with a nice return there for the Bears of 20 yards. And the Bears have great field position now. They'll take over at the 50. That was great setup right there on a punt return. He took it here to the near side, started on the far side. Ryan Putnam came up with a great block. And then Dimitri Jackson downfield about 10 yards was able to get that block that sprung him for an additional 15 yards. Good special teams there by the Brown Bears. Going to put this ball right at the 50-yard line. So E.J. Perry and the Bears offense coming out onto the field. And they'll start this drive at the 50. Perry with two receivers left, one receiver, Harriet, to the right, and McGovern is the tailback standing to the right of Perry in the backfield. On first and 10, Brown from midfield. McGovern motions out of the backfield. Perry looks, fires, and it is tipped and incomplete. Boylan, the intended receiver, but it bounced off his hands in double coverage and fell down to the turf. E.J. Perry has got Second a very down, strong 10. arm as he tried to thread that in between two defenders, which he, he did really kind of hit off the hands of Boylan right there. I don't think Boylan thought he was going to get it, try to throw it to him, but he zapped that ball right in there. Second down, 10 for the Bears at midfield. Perry out of the gun. They got Bryant to jump. This should be a free play. Perry now going to run up the middle, and he's going to pick up about 11 yards to the 39-yard line of Bryant, but we had a late flag come in for likely a hold would be my guess, unless it was an ineligible man downfield. But I, it looked like it initially was offside on Bryant, and then we may have a hold on the Bears. Let's see what the official indicates here. That would negate a first down run. They'd replay the down if it were offsetting penalties. Let's see. Okay, so it was only one flag, but that second flag came in yeah. late, didn't it? Yeah. So he was just throwing a late offside flag. The bottom line is the offside, is offside penalty declined because Bryant. the pickup of Penalty's 11 by declined. Perry brings the ball to the Bryant 39-yard line. It is first and 10 
for the Bears there. Perry getting it done, not just with his arm, but with his legs as well. Now an empty backfield and five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. McGovern motions into the backfield, sets to the right of Perry. And they fake the handoff to McGovern. Perry fires to Harriet, who takes a hit, but holds on to the ball at the 28-yard line. And it is another Brown first down. Good strength by L.J. Harriet coming over the middle right there. Goes up for the football, and he took a hit Brown right in the back. Square. And of 11 on the play. Pass is good for another Brown first down. E.J. Perry is not uh, afraid to throw the football into any type of coverage. He's got a lot of confidence in his arm. Good quick feet there. Sees LJ and threads it right in. First and 10 for the Bears at the 28 yard line of Bryant, leading at 7 3 with 12 18 to go in the second. Perry rolls right, looking to pass, looking, looking, and now he's just going to dump it out of bounds. What a smart play there by Perry to not take the loss, just get rid of the football, don't try to force it into coverage, live to see another down. down. Ten. Did do a nice job right there, and he, he actually stretched the play out as well. We're able to work himself all the way over to the sidelines, hoping maybe a receiver could get himself open, and when no one could, did the right thing and just threw it away. So now it'll bring up second down and 10 for the Bears. From the Bryant 28-yard line with 12-10 to go here in the second quarter, Brown leading 7-3. Perry out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff to Smith, back to pass. He has time, he fires left, it's low and incomplete. Intended for Jacob Prawl on the far side of the field. He just underthrew that, he had Prawl open Jacob down Prowl. about the 13 yard line, did a nice down. job. Ten. Prawl did to get off the defender. Perry just underthrew him, but good, good pass protection by the O-line. Another big third down here for the Brown Bears. They try to convert and keep this drive alive. Yep. On third down, they're going to hand it to Smith up the middle, trying to catch the Bryan defense maybe off balance a little bit, but the run up the gut by Smith doesn't net a lot. It only gets it down to the 26-yard line, where it's going to be fourth down and seven, and it appears the Bears are going to keep their offense on the field for the moment. So James Perry and the Brown offense were thinking two down territory apparently all the way. Fourth down and seven for the Bears. At the Bryant 26. Perry backs up into the gun. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. The tight end Logie motions out of the backfield. Perry back to pass. Pressure on fourth down. Tripped up and sacked. Big sack made there by the talented defensive end, Tomas Wright. Wright does a nice job on that right end. Gets in, beats. Beats the tackle on that left side. Perry tried to do a spin. It was on his blind side. Tried to spin back, but right did a nice job of getting him in on a shoestring tackle. Chopping him down. And so now the Bears turn it over on downs at the 37-yard line of the Bulldogs, and that'll bring Corey Curtis and the Bryan offense back out onto the field. First and 10, Bryant, they have it at their own 37. Bears on top, 7-3. To Handoff goes up the middle to McCray, and McCray takes it out to the 39-yard line for a pickup of two on the carry. Nice tackle there on the left side First by Ryan Brown, Putnam. Number 93, Michael Hoyt. Defensive end on that left side did a nice job of scraping down inside Second the tackle down. hole. Done. Second down and eight for the Bulldogs at their own 39. Handoff once again to McCray, and this time he's going to be wrapped up at the 40. Good shoestring tackle made Isaac there McCray, the by carrier. Malcolm Brunson, the freshman linebacker, coming up to make the stop. Brown tackle eight. Brunson Malcolm did do a Brunson. nice job right there. Got off his block. He's able to get up in the hole. Third down, seven. So it's going to bring up a third down and seven and another opportunity for this Brown defense to get off the field. Tim Weaver's defense has been stingy this afternoon, giving up just three points through the first quarter plus of this game. Back to pass Curtis. He rolls right. The pocket collapses. He gets rid of it and somehow completes the pass to Hunter Hill for a first down to the Brown 45-yard line. Charlie Dalape made the tackle, but a good job there by Curtis under duress to get the pass off and complete the first down to Hunter Hill. That was, that was all the quarterback right there. Did a great job under duress, under pressure. 
Now on first down, a handoff goes to McCray, and he bounces down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line of the Bears for a pickup of six. Came off the left side there. Nice blocking by the Bryant. Left side of the line did a nice job of collapsing down, sealing the linebacker and the tackle. It'll be second down and four for the Bulldogs at the Brown 39-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Curtis out of the shotgun. He's going to give it to McCray again up the middle. This time the Bears defense meets him at the line of scrimmage Elijah and brings McCray him back for a loss of one. Tackle made there by Elijah Pierre. Nice job by the sophomore Gagnon, number 97, did a great Brown job. Stood up the left Elijah tackle, Pierre. drove him right back loss up into the hole. The Third down, five. This could be four down territory for Bryant as they trail here. We'll see, it's third down right now and five. Bryant with the ball at the Brown 40 yard line and we got movement on that right side of the line offensive the line and that's gonna back the Bulldogs up five more. Be third and 10. Be a great chance right now for this Brown defense to get off the field here. Penalties are false They're gonna have to play tighter coverage. Five yard penalties, spots the ball back at the Brown On those routes line. that are more third than down, 12 to 10. 15 yards, we seem to give them that route where they can turn back in and we're kind of playing that three yards off. These DBs are gonna have to know right now that that uh, 35 yard line is the first down marker. They're gonna have to play tight. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Brown 45 yard line. Curtis out of the shotgun, back to pass. He fires across the middle now to the left side. It's caught and in front of Dalape once again, the catch made by Frederick Curtis and it's good enough for a Bryant first down. Frederick knew where the first down marker was. It was the 35. He drove Dalape back to the 30, backing up. Did a nice down and out. Bears are going to get caught with too many men on the field here as flags fly. The Bears get caught in a defensive switch. So that's going to be a free five yards coming up for Bryant. First hit for Brown by number 40, Brendan Pine. Brian Brown shifts a lot of players in and out, which is what we're noticing here on the fly. And these type of things can happen when you get too many men on the field when you're doing that, especially as the game progresses and guys get a little bit more tired because they're not in game condition. We talked about this. Bryant's on their fourth game. Brown's in their first game here. And anybody that knows football, there's practice condition and then there's game condition. Well, Tim Weaver was pointing towards Bryant saying, false start, false start. So that actually supersedes the too many men in the field. So the false start is going to back the Bulldogs up five. So the Bears catch a break there because they had 13 guys on the field when that ball was snapped. First down, 15. You're right, though. They do catch a break. It's going to march them back. Now they're looking at first and 15. Just about eight minutes to go here in this first half. First down 15, Bryant, they have it at the Brown 37. Curtis to pass, fires across the middle, has a man. I thought his knee may have been down, but they're gonna give him the extra yardage down to the 27 yard line. Is complete to number 25. Catch ben by Nisabochia. Ball spotted at the Brown 27 yard Once line. Once again, a wide receiver from Bryant Second able to down, find a five. seam and really make that curl route and get himself separation from the safety. Second down and five, back to pass Curtis, fires, Nisavocia makes the tough catch. He's hit immediately, but holds on to it as he was hit on the play there by Harrison Oaks. Oaks makes a nice hit, but was it down and out? He came across in the middle, found the seam underneath the cornerback, and then the free safety made the catch. He collapsed on him just a little too late when he collapsed. So now it's going to be first and goal to go for the Bulldogs as they have the ball just inside the 10-yard line at the Brown 9. Curtis out of the shotgun. Dorbor standing to his right, gets the handoff, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage for no gain on the carry. Once again, a nice tackle right there by the defensive line. You know, Brendan Pine, the outside linebacker, came up there a nice job. Second and goal for the Bulldogs. Along with Ryan Putnam as well, number 42. 
Second down goal to go at the nine. Curtis rolling right, looking to pass, firing to the end zone, and it is dropped on the far side. And Savocia, once again, was the intended receiver. Off to that down and out there. Perriman did a nice job, good coverage. Obani was underneath right there. Kind of got in the middle, almost got a deflection there. But it was almost a great catch for Bryant for a touchdown. But here's a third down. This is a big one for the Bears right here. Third down goal to go. Bryant, they have it at the Bears' nine-yard line. Can the Bears bend but not break here? Third down today. Bryant is five of eight. And Bears gonna call their second time out of the half with 6.46 to go in the second quarter from the Bears nine yard line. Curtis operates out of the shotgun with two receivers left and one to his right. Curtis back to pass. He looks. He fires into the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Hunter Hill. That looked like a mix-up on coverage right there. Number 43, Messina was man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Little Duke to the inside. I think he thought the safety was going to come over the top to take the wide receiver in the end zone. The safety never moved from his slot position. Messina came up as if he was going to protect run from the quarterback rolling out to that right side. Looked like a mix-up there in Number coverage to me. And so the Bulldogs regain the lead at 9-7 with a point after attempt here to come. The snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Six minutes, 41 seconds to go here in the second quarter, and now Bryant regains the lead over Brown. It's the Bulldogs 10 and the Bears 7. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Brown football brought to you in part by My Box of Rhode Island. When it comes to moving and storage, My Box of Rhode Island brings the storage to you. It's moving made easy. No need to rent a delivery truck. No making multiple trips to load a storage unit. Call MyBoxOfRhodeIsland.com at 401-597-6400. 541, check that 641 remaining here in the first half at Bryant. And the Bulldogs have regained the lead over the Brown Bears. It's 10-7 Bryant. After the nine-yard touchdown pass from Corey Curtis to Hunter Hill. It was a tough break on that defense right there to, you know, kind of break right there, not bend. Rowley with the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. Dimitri Jackson, Scott Boylan back deep to receive, standing at about their own goal line. Rowley approaches the football, gets his leg into it, low end over end kick. Boylan's going to take it at the five, across the 10, 15, 20. Boylan to the near side, 25, and he's going to be run out of bounds across the 30. Hit late out of bounds, no call there. And the Bears will have the ball first and 10. They'll spot it actually at the 33 yard line of Brown. First and 10 for the Bears. Good job by Boylan right there as he took that ball and just really kind of came up this right side. Showed some great speed like he has the last couple of years. Did a nice job getting it out to the 33. It's going to be a big series here for this Brown offense not to go three and out here, see if they can get some sort of a sustainable drive and maybe put some points up here going into half. First and 10 for the Bears. This drive will start at the 33. Three receivers left, one to the right. Perry, low snap. Did he get it off? No, it may be a delay game. Delay of game. Flag on the play. So right off the sideline, they get a delay of game penalty. Those are tough ones to take on the first play of a series. Delay of game that's, on those are mental errors. And that's, you know, that's the first game of the year. You know, you're only in your second quarter of playing. You know, those things will get firmed up, but those are the mental errors you just really can't have. So now on second down and 15, they fire it underneath to Jackson, little wide receiver slip screen, but Bryant read it all the way. And it'll go down as a no gainer on the play. It's gonna be second down and 15 for the Bears at the 28. Play is ruled as no gain. Second down, 15. Second and 15 for the Bears on their own 28-yard line. Perry operates out of the gun. He's motioning Jackson into the backfield. 
Perry takes the snap, rolls right, looks to pass, fires right to Jackson. It's complete and out of bounds across the 35-yard line at the 36. So he picks up some of the lost yardage there, and it's going to bring up a third down and seven for the Bears. It's wide receiver for the Bears right now, Jackson. Gemmel and Prawl are going to have to know where that first down marker is. They're third and seven. They're going to have to make sure they get there. Bears right back up to the line of scrimmage as they normally are. Two receivers left, one to the right, third and seven for Brown from its own 36. Perry takes the snap. He looks left. Now he fires left, complete to Jackson. First down catch for Dimitri out to the 44-yard line. Nice okay, Perry did a nice job staying patient in the pocket as it was collapsing a little Ryan bit, didn't get nervous. Six, Gunned it over the middle and a nice little Plays post route Brown inside by Jackson. And now on first down, a quick handoff e. there. E.J. Perry, e. Perry on the keeper. And e. he's going to ride forward for a gain of eight yards. Down, down to the 48-yard line of Bryant. Bears right, right back up to the line. Perry, the quick pass to the near side to Gemmel on second and two. And he's got the first down catch and run to the Bryant 41-yard line. Great job right Dean there. Gemmel. Nice blocking by Christopher Boyle, the freshman. We've got an injured player here for Bryant down. Well, that's one way to slow down the Brown offense right there is you have a guy go down in the middle of the field because the Bears were really catching Bryant off guard a little bit with their tempo. They had two guys down. Yeah. Again, you wonder if that wasn't a way maybe to slow the Bears down a little bit, if you know what I mean. That up-tempo, as coaches mentioned, we're going to play with speed. We're going to play fast, and you can feel it here that he is. And E.J. Perry is fitting into this offensive scheme very, very well. Good quick feet, good speed. You never know that this was his first start here at Brown or that of commanding an offense. It'll be had to learn a whole offense here after coming 31. out of Boston College. Yep. You'd think he'd been here. Look, and, and just two weeks' time from the Yale scrimmage to today, Perry looks terrific, just terrific. First and 10 for the Bears at the Bryant 41-yard line. Perry out of the gun, two receivers left, one to his right. He's going to hand it to Smith, the tailback, and Smith is going to be dropped at the Everybody line of scrimmage. No gain, may have lost area. about a half yard. Bryant tackle by number 48, Jesse Demerowitz. No gain on the play. It'll be second down second and 10 down. for the Bears at the Bulldog 41-yard line. Perry has Boylan and Prawl split out to his left. The tight end, Logie and Harriet to the near side right. And Smith is the tailback standing to E.J. Perry's left in the backfield. On second and 10 from the Bryant 41-yard line. Perry going to hand it to Smith. No, he keeps it after faking the hand. And not much running e. room there Perry for E.J. The he takes it down to the 38 for a gain of three. You know, that gain of three that he just picked up right there, he really had Line nothing. It shows how Greg quick Wood. his feet is. I mean, he was Eight able to shift his way play. in just to get third three down. yards. Seven. It'll be third down and seven for the Bears from the 38-yard line of Bryant. Perry out of the gun, takes the snap. It's the double reverse. Boylan has a blocker. It's Perry, the quarterback. But Boylan's going to be dropped short of the first down. He's tackled at the 36-yard line of Bryant. Boylan got out to the outside. He had it, but he turned north-south a little bit too soon at the 40 marker on that side. He had a nice block from Perry. He needed to stretch himself to that corner and use his speed to get up, up inside. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Yep, two down territory for the Bears as they go for it here on fourth down. It'll be fourth down and five at the 36 of Bryant. A little bit it's outside of Goforge field goal range here. Timeout. And now we're going to have Brown call its final timeout of the half with 3.14 to go in the second, trailing 10-7 here at Bryant. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Timeout. I'm Kim Insolaco, Brown University class of 2003 and former women's ice hockey and soccer player. I now lead the Brown Sports Foundation, which directly supports our 38 varsity programs. Join our team today and help to enhance the student athlete experience by visiting brownbears.com and click make a gift. Alumni and friends who support Brown athletics for two or more consecutive fiscal years will be recognized as members of our loyal Bears program. Remember to visit brownbears.com and click make a gift. Thanks, and go, Bruno. 
Crown Football brought to you by Mercedes-Benz of Warwick, proud partner of Brown Athletics. Visit us at Mercedes-Benz of Warwick.com. Scott Credici and John Anderson with you. The Bears trailing here at Bryant 10-7 with 3.14 to play here in the second quarter. And facing the Brown offense is a fourth down and five at the Bryant Bulldogs 36-yard line. And they will go for it after calling their third and final timeout of the first half. Perry has two receivers to his left, two receivers to his right. On fourth down and five from the Bryan 36-yard line. And now we have a penalty marker down here, and Bryan's clapping. I wonder if the Bears may have moved here. Somebody flinch on the offensive line? That's what it looks like to me. That flag came out so quick. But now Perry's pointing to Bryan. Did they try to get the Bears to jump? Sometimes if you jump into the neutral zone, Perry's saying it's on, and I'm saying Perry, E.J. Perry, the quarterback, is pointing to Bryant. That would give the Bears a first down. So, a delay of game Melody on the defense. Game what was happening Ryan. was one of the defensive linemen was trying to simulate the Bears' the signals, the yeah. trying to get the Bears' the offense a little rattle to get them down. to jump, and that is a penalty, and it gives the Bears a first down. What a big play there. So it's first and 10 Brown at the 31-yard line of Bryan, and now the official stopping play here for a moment. Wow, what a big penalty that was on the Bulldogs. That was a huge mental mistake right there. Giving Brown the first down here with 3.10 to go here in the first half. Now Brown's trailing by three, so they at least want to try to come away here with three if they can get themselves down in close. They're resetting the game clock to 3.14. They've got no timeout, so they're going to have to really manage the clock well here. First and 10 for the Bears at the 31-yard line of Bryant. Perry's going to hand it off. McGovern running right, throws it back left to Perry. Perry's going to run with it, and not much there. It looked fancy, but it netted a gain of only two to the 29-yard line of Bryant. He was one player away, number 27, the safety for Bryant. Just a little too quick for... Nick Alsop, the block, the guard who was downfield blocking on that. He just was able to get around him. If he did made that block there, that was a touchdown. And now McGovern is in at quarterback as Perry goes to the sideline. Second down and eight for the Brown offense at the 29-yard line. McGovern to pass, looks near side, completes it to Dan Gemmel. Has blockers at the 25 at the 20, driving forward to the 15-yard line. Danny Gemmel with a nice, pass tough run after Michael the catch. McGovern. And it's first and 10 for the Bears at the Late Bryant 14-yard line. Gemmel did do a great job there, kept his feet moving. Took First three tacklers to take him down right there, but the clock is still going to run here. It's 246, 245, and it's winding down. No timeout. You're inside the red zone here. You've got to play. Hurry up. Perry back in at quarterback. He has three receivers to his left. Bolton is the tailback standing to his right. On first and 10 at the 14, handoff to Bolton up the middle, and Bolton hit at the 13 and driven back after a gain of only one. I think they thought they were going to be able to fool Bryant right there in the middle, maybe go with Bolton when there's only 2.14 to go, no timeouts. Maybe thinking EJ's going to have to pass the football, but they didn't fool anybody in the middle. No. Second down and nine for the Bears. They have it at the 13-yard line of the Bulldogs with just over two minutes to go in the first half. Brown trailing 10-7 here at Bryant. Two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. And the tailback is Smith. They hand it off to him. Smith trying the left side, and he's going to bounce his way down inside the seven-yard line. Good run there by Allen Smith, the sophomore. Allen Smith did do a nice job right there. They were rushing three. They spread out the defense. And it's going to bring up a third down and call it three. Third down, three. Smith, Smith gets the handoff, takes it down inside the five. He's going to be very close to a first down. He needed to gain the four-yard line for a first down. This will all depend on the spot of the football. And right now they're going to spot it, it looks like, at the five, so he'll be a yard shy. 
They've got to make this conversion. They've got only a minute 18 to go. They've run the ball the last three times. So this clock is ticking down, and they've got no timeouts. They've got to hustle here. Bears aren't thinking field goal. They're thinking touchdown on fourth down and less than a yard to go from the Bryant five-yard line. Clay clock is down to 10. Bears don't have any timeouts. They get to get up to the line of scrimmage. It's down to five. Perry with an empty backfield. Takes the snap, and he's going to run it, and Perry's got a first down as he spins to the end zone. Does he get in? No, he's going to be tackled at the one. They've got to hustle Bryant up here, though. They've got 44 Bryant seconds Bryant left with no timeouts. They're Bryant hurrying. At the Bryant one yard line. First, and, first and goal to go. Brown at the one-yard line with 44 seconds to go in the first half. Bears trying to regain the lead, and now Bryant's going to call a timeout. That's a good timeout right there for Brown Bears with none. Bryant uses that timeout. And how about the attitude of James Perry? We've seen it a couple of times on fourth down. Now, we're not going to settle for a field goal. We're keeping the offense on the field. We're going for first downs and touchdowns. He's got the confidence in his offensive line. He's got the confidence in his offensive players, especially his uh, quarterback. You could see it right there. What did he do? Fourth down. He's giving it to EJ. He's saying, you make this play for me. He's got the confidence he's going to make that play. Have to be impressed with the play of EJ Perry so far in this football game. We'll We'll pick up some of his individual stats for you, and we'll certainly give you complete individual stats at halftime of this game. But uh, E.J. Perry doing a good job today, 11 of 17 passing for 89 yards, a touchdown. He also has one interception, but he's also run the football very effectively as well today. Perry, the leading rusher for the Bears, eight carries for 58 yards, averaging 7.3 yards per carry. Well, they've got to be wise right here because they do have no timeouts. They're first and goal, but they've got 44 seconds left. It's first and goal to go Brown at the Bryant one-yard line. Perry with an empty backfield. Wide receiver is wide Wide receiver is uncovered on the far side of the field. If, if EJ had seen it, he could have had the ball snapped, and he would have had a touchdown to Andrew Bolton. So Perry out of the shotgun on first and goal to go from the one. Motions Jackson into the backfield. Perry takes the snap. He's going to run it up the gut. Does he make it into the end zone? No a call yet. Yes, EJ touchdown Bears. E.J. Perry from one yard out puts the Bears back on top. It's 13-7 Brown. E.J. Perry's done it with his arm, and now he does it with his legs. Drives Brown in. First, go ahead. Touchdown. Check that 13-10 Bears, the score, and now Gofrich to try to make it a 14-10 game. Out of the hold of Mike McGovern. So E.J. Perry today with a touchdown rushing and passing for the Bears. Accounting for all of their scoring. Here's Gofrich now to attempt the point after to make it a four-point Brown lead with 40 seconds to go in the half. Good snap. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is good. 40 seconds to go in the second quarter. We'll keep it right here. It's Brown 14 and Bryant 10. What a drive right there by the Brown Bears. They picked that ball up with about six minutes and 10 seconds to go in this half at their own 33-yard line. And their offense made conversions where they had to. Third down, fourth downs. Well, I think I can't emphasize enough the play of E.J. Perry. I mean, his toughness, his presence, his wherewithal when – when things aren't there, he's making the right decisions, whether that be to just throw the football away or making some plays with his legs. And even there have been some plays where they've called his number to run the football. He's been very good today. There's no question about it. He settled right in after that first interception he threw. I mean, he, you can tell he's feeling real comfortable. And, and like you said, he only came here in August. He wasn't here for spring football. So he's only learned this offense over the last three to four weeks that he's been in the system and he looks really comfortable. We won't say, though, that around the, the family table that he hasn't been talking about this <laughs> offense, I'm sure, right? That's true, <laughs> I'm sure. Gofridge to tee the ball up at the 35-yard line, and he'll kick it deep to the Bulldogs. And Sabochia and Hill back deep to receive, standing at their own five-yard line. Gofrich gets his leg into this one. Another good end over end kick. It's going to back Nisavocia up into his end zone where he takes a knee for a touchback. Kick is down in the end zone. I like what Coach Perry had said uh, 
at the coaches show this week when well, we mentioned EJ and coach and line, what's going on well he said around Thanksgiving his grandmother will be all over him if he doesn't that's right <laughs> he doesn't remember what he's supposed to do <laughs> so now the Bryan offense comes out onto the field with 40 seconds to go until halftime but they now trail the Brown Bears by 4 14 to 10 with 40 seconds left in the second quarter Chris Hindle had been the team's starting quarterback for their first three games with Corey Curtis seeing limited action. But today, Curtis gets to start against the Bears. He has played the entire first half of this game for Bryant, and we have a penalty marker down for a delay of game. So Bryant comes off the sideline with a delay of game penalty. And now it's going to bring up first and 15. And you wonder if that five-yard penalty now balls, maybe five penalty, possibly makes Chris penalty. Merritt, the first-year Brian head coach, think, you know what, maybe we ought to just kind of run the ball and get into the halftime locker room. We'll see what he decides to do here. First and 15 from the 20. He's going to pass. Has a man. It's complete out across the 27 to the 28-yard line. Complete to number seven, Hunter Hill. Hill makes the catch for a gain of eight out to the 28. Uh, it's going to be second down and down seven. And Brian quickly up to the line with 24 play. seconds to go in the half. Second and seven. Back to pass. Curtis looking deep down the near sideline. And it is incomplete. On the coverage Curtis was B.J. Ubani. The intended receiver was Anthony Jennifer Frederick. 19, Anthony Good Frederick. job by Ubani right there. It was a fly route. Third he had him by his step. Ubani showed his speed and turned his head just at the right time. Used the sideline to help him defend. Was able to knock that ball down. And so now the clock stops with 17 seconds to go until halftime. And it'll be third down and seven for the Bulldogs from their own 28. Corey Curtis out of the gun will just hand it off on third down. No, he's going to keep it. And he's going to pick up a first down all the way out to the 49-yard line with 11 seconds to go until halftime. And I think Bryant's going to use its final time out of the half. They are. Now they're thinking if we can hit one pass for about 15 yards or so, we're in field goal range. Their field goal kicker, Sam Perry, has hit one already this season from 49 yards out. So you got your Brown Bears right now. You're going to be looking for that deep pass right now because they're going to need that. They have no other timeouts left, like you mentioned, Scott. So they have one play to get themselves either in touchdown. It's going to be an outside type of pass to the outside sidelines, I would believe, so that at least they can maybe get out of bounds and get their field goal team in. They throw it over the middle. It might be tough to pull off another play, but one thing Bryant's doing is they're searching for their first win here. You can tell, they, like you had mentioned, they could have taken a knee, but they're not. Well, they've got the ball at midfield. Now they're out of timeouts with 11 seconds to go until halftime. So they have to work the sideline. Of course, a first down catch would stop the clock momentarily to move the chains, but they probably, I would say, need at least 15 to 20 yards to be in field goal range. Curtis out of the shotgun from the 50, first and 10, fires right side, and it's incomplete. He had a man open, too. Yes, and that man was about 15, 16 yards out. So second down, 10. Coaches knew where they wanted to place it where they thought they could get that field goal. Now it's going to come down to their last play here. So if you're the Brown Bears, you're just going to back it up. So the clock stops with seven seconds to go until halftime, where it's second down and 10, Bryant at the 50-yard line. They'll try, I would imagine, something similar here. If they can get a down and out for about 15 yards, they'll take it. Otherwise, you take a shot at the end zone if you're the Bulldogs. They have three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Curtis out of the gun, takes the snap, and we have a penalty marker down, and I think we may have had a Bryant player line up offside. Yeah, he was. I'm right on the 50-yard line. Play. I saw him right out here. It was a late flag. I'm, I wanted to say he's offside. You could tell him he's, all, he's a half a foot over. That's going to hurt him. Well, they call him for a false start, but you're right. I mean, that's inexcusable when a receiver <laughs> is looking into the ball. I know. You can't be past where the football the is. Uh, that's football 101. Penalty. Spots the ball back at the Bryant 45 yard line. Second down, 15. So the five yard penalty will back the Bulldogs up into their own territory to the 45 yard line with seven seconds to go until halftime. Second and 15. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Curtis out of the shotgun on second and 15. Looks, fires across the middle of the field, but that's not going to get it done because. 
Well, the clock will stop at two seconds to go. They'll see if they can clock it real quickly. And they might be able to clock it, and they do with one second to go. And let's see. Is Coach that Perry's the half or not? running his team off. He's running his team off. <laughs> this, he, uh, Coach Perry just said, it's over, man. Even yeah. It's one second. There's no way. And Brian's so the, of, argue. the officials, I think we're going to give Brian another down, but I think uh, James Perry may have sold him on the fact that it's <laughs> halftime. <laughs> he, he did. He, he was halfway out. He was already into the locker room. <laughs> All right, after two quarters of football here at Bryant University, the Bears go to the locker room on top of the Bulldogs by 4, 14 to 10. We'll be back with the Coca-Cola halftime report in just a moment. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Go back to the stadium. Scott Kardashi, John Anderson back at Burns Stadium in Smithfield, Rhode Island. Brown Bears on top of the Brian Bulldogs at halftime, 14 to 10. The Bears won the opening coin toss of this football game, John, and they elected to defer their choice to receive the ball to the second half. So not only does Brown lead by four heading into the third quarter, they will get the football to start the second half as well. Can't ask for anything better than that. The last time they had the ball, they drove down and scored right there near the end of the first half. Put it right back in E.J. Perry's hands. Dimitri Jackson, Scott Boylan dropping back deep to receive for the Bears. And you know, they will Scott, each stand you know, inside their own five-yard line. You know, in the winter you bring heaters. You didn't bring a fan. <laughs> That's a good point, John. <laughs> wow. You know, even after doing these games for so many years, I'm still learning. Here's the kick by Rowley. It's a low-line driver that is angling toward the sideline. Boylan's going to pick it up at the 14, and he's running to the near side, 15, 20, and he spins forward to the 24-yard line where he is tackled. So the Bears will take over on offense to start the third quarter, leading by four at their own 24-yard line. You know, there's something we haven't really talked much of is the special teams. And, you know, that first half, our special teams quietly did a very good job. You know, and they did do a nice job quietly. Very little mistakes. Yeah. I would agree with that. Now Danny Gemmel had some good returns. I thought Dawson Goforge yeah. did a very good job kicking the ball. Perry in the offense, first and 10 at the 24-yard line. Perry's going to fire it out to Boylan, near side on first down. And Boylan runs it out. Close to the 29, a catch and run of about five yards for Scott Boylan on first down. Perry goes right back at it, that short pass out here, a little flare out pass here to Boylan in the flat. It'll be second down and five for the Bears on their own 29-yard line, and this time they're going to fake the handoff. Perry's going to roll out right, hit his tight end, Logie, and Emerson Logie won't go down, and he picks up a first down out to the 35-yard line. How about that effort by Emerson Logie? First pass today that he's caught, does a nice job going out in a little tight end seven-yarder, gets a guy around his back and able to put his arm down, get himself right next to the first down mark. He's got to be inches. I'm surprised they're not calling for a measurement. Yeah. No, they're going to give him the first they down. They are giving him the first down. First and 10 for the Bears from their own 34-yard line. Perry back up to the line of scrimmage. Three receivers to his left. The tight end, Bolton, the tailback standing to his right, and the freshman tight end, Boyle, lined up right as well. Perry out of the gun on first and 10 from the 34, hands it off to Bolton. Bolton trying the left side. He cuts it up and in, and he takes it out to the 37 for a three-yard pickup on the first down carry. Nice job by uh, Bolton right there, getting up inside the guards on that left side. Perry does a nice job as well as finishing off his play there and takes the linebacker with him. Second down, seven for the Bears from their own 37. Perry out of the gun, three receivers to his right, Bolton standing to his left. Perry to pass, looks right, fires down the sideline to Jackson, and what a catch <laughs> by Dimitri Jackson. They're going to say no, he was out of bounds, but he literally pulled that off the back of a Bryant defender. What concentration, running full speed on a fly route. They're going to talk about it on the far side. Well, one official has it as a catch. The other one says incomplete, and they're giving him the catch at the 40-yard line. That is a highlight catch by Dimitri Jackson, sprinting down, jumps up over the top with one hand over the defender, pulls it in, and is able to get his feet down before he goes out of bounds. What a catch. You know, I had a chance to talk to these coaches when they took over, and I said, you know, Dimitri Jackson's a guy, you're going to get every ounce out of him. He gives you everything he has, every snap of every play in practice and games, and 
You see it on display right there. First and 10, Brown at the Bryant 40. Perry shovels it behind to McGovern, who wants to run it. McGovern looking to get the corner, and he can. He's tackled for a loss at the 41, and we got a penalty marker down. That looks like it could be a hole. Yeah, that was in this direction right here as the line kind of pulled out to try to get uh, Govern some blocking downfield. The left side of the line was pulling out, and I think there was some grabbing going on. They just couldn't get out here to seal the corner fast enough. That's exactly what it is going to be holding. It's going to come back. It's going to be a first down again. Ten yards back. It's going to push us back to the 50-yard line. We're going to be right at midfield now. Got to get down to the 30. So it would have been second and 11 because it was a loss of one. Instead, Bryant will take the 10-yard penalty and make it first and 20. Bears backed up to midfield. Perry with two receivers to his left. One LJ Harriet out to the right. McGovern, the quarterback, standing to the right of Perry in the backfield. Perry identifying the Mike linebacker. Now he steps back into the gun. Four on the play clock. Takes the snap back to pass. Good protection. Perry's going to step up into the pocket and run with it and tackle to the Bryant 45. He picks up five on the carry. And credit Mike McGovern for picking up a blitzing <laughs> linebacker on that play. I saw the whole thing right there. I said, what a transformation from a year ago. Here's a guy who's a quarterback. As coach said, everyone's going to play. A blitzing linebacker. You're the slot back there. He comes up, does a nice block, gets his face right in there. And Springs Perry pick up five yards. Second down 15 for the Bears at the Bryant 45-yard line. Perry out of the gun, two receivers to his left, one to his right. Now we've got the tight end lined up to his right and the tailback to his left. Perry back to pass, pumps, middle of the field, looking for Jackson, incomplete. We got a penalty marker. Pass interference is going to be the call, and Andre Brackett didn't like it. Yeah, that's a good call, though. Dimitri Jackson was coming across the middle. And Bracken had him right across on the back. He had his hand right across his back there. It was a good call. Going to bring up an automatic first down. Yep, that'll give the Bears a first down all the way down to the 30, what are they going to spot it at the 32, 33-yard line of Bryant? That's a big play right there for the Bears, and they'll take it. It's at the 31. So the net result of the pass interference is 14 yards, but it brings with it an automatic first down, even though it was second and 15. Perry and the Bears offense right back up to the line of scrimmage where it's first and 10 Brown at the Bryant 31 yard line. Perry takes the snap, takes the handoff, fires it out near side. The freshman Sutton makes the catch, takes it inside the 30 down to the 28. That little flare out there, wide receiver screen they throw out here. Puts Gemmel down blocking for the freshman. Does a nice three job and picks up three Second yards. Down, Second down and seven for the Bears at the Bryant Bulldogs 28-yard line. 14 to 10 Brown with 11.30 to go here in the third quarter. Perry motions Sutton into the backfield, and I think he's going to have to call a timeout here. Seems to be some confusion. Now Sutton's going to go back and set. Still time on the play clock. It's down to seven. Perry takes the snap. Looks, fires right, completes it out to Sutton, and it's going to be a loss of actually two yards back to the 30 and a penalty marker down on the play. It's going to be a holding. It's in that holding uh, area. A lot of pressure on uh, E.J. Perry right there. They came with the blitz. It's going to be holding against Brown. So instead of third down and nine, is Bryant going to accept this penalty here? Looks like they will. So the Bears will get another down. With this offense, I'll take the extra down yeah. every day of the week. So it's going to be second and 17 instead of third and nine for the Bears. Perry out of the gun, takes the snap, rolling right. Perry looking, looking, firing downfield, has LJ Harriet complete. And he's inside the 25-yard line of the Bulldogs. He's tackled out of bounds at about the 24. Great play call right there by Vinny Marino, offensive coordinator. He rolled everybody out to that right side. 
EJ was out there all alone. Third down and three for the Bears at the Bulldogs 24. Quick snap, handoff to Bolton, up the middle, and Bolton driving forward close to the 21, which is where he needed to gain the first down. It looks like he might be just short. It's gonna be where they spot it. Yeah, it's gonna be spotted at the 22. It's gonna be fourth down and one. The Bears one for two on their fourth down conversions today. And James Perry again, keeping his offense out onto the field. A lot of personnel change right now. It's down to 18 seconds on the play clock. Bears bringing a heavy set with a double tight end, Logie and Boyle to the right. And the tailback is Allen Smith. Two receivers, Gemmel and Jackson to the left. Now Jackson motions to the right, back to the left. Handoff goes to Smith up the middle, and he's got the first down to the 20-yard line of Brian. Needed a yard, picked up two. What a push by the offensive line on that side. You mentioned it. Logie, Nick Alsop at the guard, and Phil Lynch at the tackle. Just got up underneath their guys and won the trench war right there. Moved their guys back and just pushed them. And now it's first and 10 for the Bears at the Bryan Bulldogs 20-yard line. Perry takes the snap, hands the ball off. Again, it's Smith up the middle, and he drives forward. Good push from that offensive line again as a gain of six down to the 14-yard line for Allen Smith. Quara doing a nice job at center, number 77, the senior. Really came right out there and did a nice block on the middle linebacker and opened it up. And if you've watched this offensive run game between the two guards, it's been phenomenal here. In this third quarter. Just over nine minutes to go in the third, 14-10. Brown with the lead, and they're driving for another score. Handoff, they fake it to Bolton. Perry right around right end, spins inside the 10. Tackle at the five-yard line. It's first and goal to go, Brown. I tell you, the men in the trenches right now, you can tell from right up here, they are just winning the war right there. Standing the defensive linemen up of Bryant and driving them, creating holes for either Bolton or Perry to run through. First and goal to go, Brown. They have it at the Bulldogs' four-yard line. Perry has Allen Smith at tailback standing to his left. Three receivers to the left, and the tight end, Logie, lines up right. Perry operates out of the shotgun on first and goal to go from the four. EJ takes the snap. He wants to pass. He fires to the end zone. Caught, Dimitri Jackson. Touchdown, Bears. EJ Perry, Dimitri Jackson. Right across the middle right there. It goes into that area where you know you're going to get your head blocked off and makes the catch. Great catch by Dimitri Jackson, the senior right there, as you had mentioned, Scott. Gives you everything he's got. And we have an injured Bryant player down on the field, but the touchdown catch by Dimitri Jackson, his first of the season for E.J. Perry, his second touchdown pass of the season. It puts Brown up 20-10. to 10 with eight minutes, 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Well, John, this is a Brown offense that a year ago averaged only 14.3 points per game, and here we are with eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and they're sitting at 20, about to make it 21. Dawson Gofrich to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Mike McGovern. Good snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to go, third quarter, and the Bears extend their lead to 11. It's Brown 21, Bryant 10. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Whether it's running your next 5K, playing with your grandkids, oh or planning your next business move, at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Rhode Island, everything you live for, we live for. That's why we're doing more to make sure you're always connected to new and convenient ways to stay active and fit. Because when a health plan does more to keep you healthier, it's easier to keep doing everything that makes you happy. Helping you get more health from your health plan is more than a promise. It's what we live for. Business or pleasure, Queen Airport keeps you moving with its convenient location and smooth check-in process so you can enjoy the journey in between. Visit pvdairport.com. Scott Credici, John Anderson, back at Bryant University's Burns Stadium in Smithfield, Rhode Island. A four-yard touchdown pass from E.J. Perry to Dimitri Jackson has increased the Brown lead to 11. It's the Bears 21 and the Bulldogs 10. Dawson Gofrich has the ball teed up at the 35-yard line, set to kick it deep to Vincent Nisavocia and Hunter Hill. Gofrich gets his leg into it, high end over end. This is returnable. It'll be taken at the one by Nisavocia. 
across the 10, 15, 20, 25-yard line, 30, 35-yard line tackled at the 38. They'll knock him out at the 39-yard line. Good return there by Nis Vocia, the redshirt senior. Vocia did do a nice job. He found a seam on this side. We got another Bryant player down right here on the near sideline. It's going to give us a timeout. You look at that last drive, though, Scott. I mean, talk about it. You're down to 822. They just mastered coming down the field. And, you know, second and long, second and 20s. Uh, you know, they faced some adversity there as an offense, and they were able to convert. And that, that's the difference I see here. It's just the confidence that we're going to make the play. Well, and what a way to come out of the locker room, John. They have a drive that lasts six and a half minutes coming out of the locker room to start the third quarter. You took the momentum into the locker room with you by scoring just before halftime and then holding Brian off, and then you score to start the third quarter. That's good football. On first and 10 from the 39-yard line, the pass is complete on the near side to Anthony Frederick from Curtis, and that's going to be good enough for a Brian first down out to midfield. And then you put the dagger in. Instead of walking away with three points, you walk around away with seven. Right. First and ten, Brian at midfield. They're going to hand the ball off this time. Dorabor, the ball carrier, takes it into Bears territory. Hit down at the 44-yard line of Brown. Ball loose, but his knee was down. It's going to be Brian's football. Nice hit there. Came up there by number 47. Back did a nice job. Davis back to junior out of Tampa, Florida. Six-yard gain on the run there by Dorbor. It's going to be second down for Bryant at the Bears' 44-yard line. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Corey Curtis, the quarterback, operates out of the shotgun. Curtis takes the snap, tosses it right. McCray, the ball carrier, takes it down inside the 40. And we have penalty markers coming in late. It's a first down run for McCray, but hold on, hold on a moment as we have penalty markers down. McCray did a nice job getting here to the outside. Bryant did a nice job on sealing Flanders, the defensive end. Let's see what the indication is here. They're moving backwards, so the penalty is on the Bulldogs. Let's hear the call. Anthony Frederick, the wide receiver, gets called for a personal foul, an illegal block below the waist. So that negates the first down catch. And it'll back Bryant up into their own territory to the Bulldog 45-yard line where it'll be second down and 15. Bulldogs have shot themselves in the foot a few times with penalties here today. And now they snap the ball before the ball was even set. Both, both teams are ready to go. It's not like Bryant or Brown wasn't ready to go. The officials weren't ready to go. The official microphone is not working well here at Burren Stadium. So we can only catch bits and pieces of what he's saying. 7.23 to go in the third quarter. 21-10, Brown leads Bryant, second and 15 for the Bulldogs at their own 45. Curtis out of the gun, three receivers left, one receiver right, takes the snap, drops back to pass. Flushed out of the pocket, rolls right, throws right, incomplete, but we're going to get a penalty marker down on the Bears. They're going to call a penalty, I believe, on Cooper DeVoe. Yeah, they're going to call the freshman right there as he touched the wide receiver. I mean, it didn't look like he was really kind of near him. Defense, but. number 27. 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, now the referee's mic is working. So the penalty on DeVoe is going to give Brian an automatic first down. It'll be first and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Bears' 45-yard line. Seven minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. It's 21-10 Brown. Brian has it first and 10 at the Bears' 45-yard line. Two receivers left, two receivers right. And Curtis operates out of the shotgun on first and 10. Curtis back to pass, looks left, fires left, has a man, 
And it is complete. Catch is made by Nisavolcia. Out of bounds at the 37-yard line of the Bears. An eight-yard catch for the redshirt senior. Did a nice job. Nice down and out. Got separation from the cornerback on that side. Olifi and good push though by the defensive line of Brown. They were up the field. Snap, handoff, McCray spins forward, and he's got enough for the first down. It looked like initially he would be stopped short, but to his credit, he was able to spin forward and pick up the two yards down to the 35-yard line, and that'll move the chains for Bryant, first and 10 Bulldogs. I thought the Brockton native high schooler, DK had him. Kingsley did a nice job coming up. He put a big hit. He just couldn't get a wrap. He had a blocker on him. He couldn't get off the blocker. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Brown Bears 35-yard line. 6.25 to go, third quarter. Brown leading at 21-10 here at Bryant. Fake the handoff to McCray. Back to pass, Curtis. He's pressured, and he gets out of a sack from Hoyt, but he can't get out of a second tackle as bringing him down is Michael Neary. Michael Neary did a nice job right there, along with number 47. Davis back. back. Davis back came up from that safety position, flying. He put a hit right up around the shoulder pads but it was Hoyt who flushed him out. Second down and 10 for Bryant at the Brown 35. Curtis, two receivers to his left and two to his right. Play clock is down to six as Curtis gets the call from the sideline. Takes the snap back to pass, has time, steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to run with it. Firing it deep downfield. Oh, that's incomplete. That should be offensive pass interference as Hunter Hill had the jersey of Cooper DeVoe and pulled him out of the way. You can see it from all the way up here. The referee that was really close there just didn't have the angle. I think he was watching the ball, not the play. He missed that one. Wow. I mean, you could see just a handful of white jersey in Hill's hands as he pulled DeVoe out of the way. Huge third down here for the Bears. See if they can dig in. They're going to show that three-man front right now. Third and 10. Bryant at the Brown 35-yard line. Back to pass is Curtis. He sets. He fires down the left side. Has a man wide open. Broken coverage for the Bears. And it'll be a Bryant first down at the 18-yard line. You're right. It was broken coverage, Scott, all the way right there. DeVoe, the freshman, and Bach, uh, the junior on the outside, they basically latched onto the fly route and left the, the underneath man wide open. Hunter Hill picks up the first down, first and 10. Bryant at the Brown 18-yard line. This time they're going to hand the ball off. No, it's going to be a fake handoff, and Curtis will take it around left end, and he'll take it inside the 15-yard line for a pickup of almost four yards on the carry. This defense has been out here a long time right now. Down, They've got to, as we always say, bend and not break here. See if they can come away here. They're only letting up three. It is a four-yard gain, second down and six. Brian at the Bears' 14-yard line. Curtis operates out of the shotgun, takes the snap, back to pass, looks left, fires left, has a man. It is caught, and it's going to be a Bryant first down. The catch is made on the far side of the field by number 13. That is Matt Caruso. Caruso does a good job. It was just a screen, wide receiver screen to the far side. Both two, three wide receivers, two go down. They lock into the cornerbacks. Our cornerbacks couldn't get off of their blocks right there. Safety had to come over the top to make the tackle, or else it would have been a touchdown. First and goal to go, Bryant. They have it at the Bears' six-yard line. Curtis takes the snap. Rolling left, firing his pat deflected down at the line of scrimmage as Medeiros got a piece of it. Jason Medeiros, a sophomore local from Rehoboth, Massachusetts, does a great job coming up on the blitz, but knows he can't get to Curtis. Puts his hands up in the air, good fundamentals, is able to block the ball as he climbs the ladder. We were talking to Jason's dad before the game. Second down and goal to go, Bryant. They have it at the Bears' six-yard line. Curtis takes the snap, hands it to McCray, bouncing it out to the left, cutting it up and into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Isaac McCray from six yards out, and Bryant cuts the Brown lead to five. They did a nice job in the corner on a blitz. Jason Medeiros was blitzing onto the inside. They were able to seal the linebacker, Icho DK, coming across. He got blocked in. Easy seam, 
They cleared out our cornerback on a fade route to the back corner of the end zone, made it for an easy runoff tackle. And I guess not at the point in the game yet where you want to consider going for two, because this point after will bring Bryant to within four here. Snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and the extra point is good. So the Bears lead trimmed down to four. It is now Brown 21, Bryant 17 with 3.58 to go in the third. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Make a better choice and stop by Tropical Smoothie Cafe today. Smoothies made with real fruits and veggies pair perfectly with our new pressed sandwiches. Make your smoothie perfectly you. Add some love with our fresh add-ins like almonds, spinach and kale, chia seeds, and ginger. Or supplements like probiotic, whey, and energizer. Order ahead, skip the line, and earn rewards with the Tropical Rewards app. All at Tropical Smoothie Cafe at 272 Thayer Street. Eat better, feel better. Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Brown Football brought to you by the Brown University Sports Foundation. Through your donations and the work of our volunteers, the Brown Sports Foundation is committed to providing funding and support to Brown Athletics to enhance the student athlete experience. Thank you for your generosity and service to Brown Athletics. 3.58 to go third quarter here at Bryant University. Each team has had the ball once here in the third quarter, and each have mounted long touchdown drives. So the Bears will get the football back here as Bryant has it teed up at the 35-yard line. Gavin Rowley will kick it deep to Dimitri Jackson and Scott Boylan. Jackson standing at his own two. Boylan at the goal line. Rowley's kick end over end. This one's going to back Boylan up into the end zone where he's going to take a knee for a touchback. So E.J. Perry and the Brown offense come out onto the field where they will start this drive first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 3.58 to go in the third quarter. Brown leading Bryant 21-17. Been a good football game this afternoon here in Smithfield. It's going to be important for this offense to really do something here to keep that defense fresh over there. A three and out would be really tough on this defense. They've been out there a while here in this, uh, in this heat, especially their first game. You know, those guys are over there right now trying to get as much liquid as they can in them and keep them hydrated. Perry has two receivers left, two to his right, both in the tailback standing to his right of the backfield. On first and ten, Perry to pass, fired it behind Jacob Prowl. Prowl cut in, and Perry was upset. Looked like he expected Prowl to cut out. Yeah, it was a miscommunication right there. As you're right, Prowl did go to the inside, and Perry was throwing to the, to the out. Second and 10 for the Bears from their own 25-yard line. Perry out of the gun with three receivers right, one to his left. Perry back to pass, sets, fires right side. It is incomplete and intended for L.J. Harriet with Brackett in coverage. Incomplete. A little mismatch over there in height. Brackett's uh, a, a lot, probably up to the shoulder pads of L.J. Harriet. Big third down here. And the Bryant crowd coming to its feet now here on third down, trying to sense or trying to get the momentum of this game back on their team side. Bryant just scored a touchdown. They can get off here on three and out. They will have done just that. On third and 10, Perry back to pass. He steps up, rolls right, avoids a sack. He cuts it up at the 30, 35-yard line, spun down at the 40-yard line. It's another big first down run by E.J. Perry. The crowd is roaring here at Bryant College. Perry gets it in the pocket. He's under pressure. He avoids a tackle, almost goes to the ground, knows where the first down marker is, knows his team needs the first down, and he gets it done. He's the X factor. <laughs> I mean, defenses have a hard time accounting for that. There's no question. First and 10, Brown at the 42-yard line after the nice run by E.J. Perry of 17 yards. Perry back to pass. He fires across the middle, incomplete for Scott Boylan. Good coverage there by the linebacker. He's down. He's not going to come up. He might have just it looks like he's something. cramping up. Yeah, cramping up. And on a hot day like today, you can understand the players might be a little dehydrated and cramp up a bit. And that is uh, Nemirovich, the middle linebacker so he's being attended to down on the field we'll take a timeout with 314 to go bears up 21 17 here at bryant from learfield img college this is brown bears football 
I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jesse Nemirovich walks off the field under his own power, the Bryant middle linebacker, so he appears to be okay. The incomplete pass results in a second down and 10 for the Bears from their own 42, leading 21-17 here at Bryant with 3.14 to go in the third quarter. Perry back to pass on second and 10. Plenty of time, now steps up. He's gonna run to the right at the 45 midfield and into Bryant territory, and it is another first down run for E.J. Perry. This Bryant defense just cannot account for number four. They cannot, they have no one who's got the speed or the quickness to stay with him. Once he starts to scramble and things break down, He's so elusive, he just makes things happen. First and 10, Brown at the 45 of Bryant. Now they're going to hand it off up the middle to Allen Smith and a nice run of six yards for Allen Smith to the Bulldogs' 39-yard line. And when you key that linebacker on him like they just did and they make that handoff up the middle, the linebacker takes those two steps because they think EJ is going to hold it. Wide open for that fullback coming up the middle. Second down four for the Bears and the Bryant 39. Fake the handoff, throw it to the tight end, Logie, and Logie makes the catch a yard shy of the first down marker at the 36-yard line of Bryant. A lot of diversity in this offense. You're right, playing fast. Fullback up the middle, Harry, I mean, E.J. Perry running the ball. Now Logie out in the flat. Third and one for the Bears. They hurry up to the line. They hand it off to Smith, and he's going to be stopped short. No gain on the carry for Allen Smith. The Bears tried the quick snap to see if they could pick up the yard in the first down, and they could not. And now it's going to be fourth down and one for the Bears. And they will again keep the offense on the field here. Aggressive play here by Coach Perry. Timeout. Timeout on the field. Timeout by who? In oh, an injury timeout. We have an in uh, Andre Brackett down on the far side of the field for Bryant. Got to love Coach Perry's aggressiveness here. He's up by four with two minutes to go on the road. The ball's at the 36-yard line. You could really, if you brought in your punt team, you could maybe pin him down inside the 10, make him drive 95 yards or so, you know, to get towards a score, see what your defense can do. But he wants to keep his offense on this field. And as you said, the X factor, E.J. Perry, with the ball in his hands. 2.07 to play, third quarter here at Bryant. Bears 21, Bulldogs 17. And the Bears with another fourth down and one here. It'll be fourth down and one for Brown at the Bears Bryant today 36. have made a couple of fourth down conversions on the day. They are two for three on fourth down. Fourth and one for the Bears from the Bryant 36-yard line. Perry takes the snap, fires right. Oh, he overthrew it. He had Bolton wide open, and he missed it. Oh, wide open on the back side. It's probably the first mistake he's made. He hurried himself. Bryant had all nine men in the box. Bolton was out on the outside by himself. Really, all he had to do was hit him in the chest, and he... He rushed himself. Yeah, he just threw it too high, and Bolton could not leap that high and make the grab. He was, when we say wide open, folks, there was not a black jersey, a Bryant defender, within 10 yards of him. Not at all. So Bryant takes over on downs, trailing by 4, 21-17, with 2.02 to go in the third. And Curtis back to pass, and he has a man out across midfield. The catch is made by Hunter Hill, and here come the Bulldogs. First and 10, Bryant at the Brown 49-yard line. Hand the ball off to McCray. McCray dancing his way forward, and he's going to pick up some big yardage. He picks up nine and a half yards on the carry across the 40-yard line of the Bears. 
pair of defense is just going to settle right back down into where they were here. As Bryant showing that hurry up offense. Second down, one. Second down and less than a yard to go for Bryant at the Bears 40 yard line. And they're going to have Curtis pass. He rolls right, fires right in complete. Now it's going to bring up third down in less than one. This is where you want to get off the field. This is where the defense wins the battle on third downs. And if you can get off the field here on third down. Third down and one, Curtis. Out of the shotgun. You would think they're going to hand it off to McCray right here and just pick up the one yard and live to see another series of downs. No, the Curtis is going to pass, fires it, and it is complete for a first down. Down at the 35-yard line, the catch by Nisavocha. The side, the cornerbacks weren't playing head up on the man right here off the ball. We were 10 yards down. It was a wide open, just basically wide receiver just go a yard and throw it to him. There's no way we had a chance to defend against it. And so it's first and 10. Bryan at the 36-yard line of the Bears with 50 seconds to go in the quarter. Handoff McCray up the middle, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. Davis back came in and got him. 26, Isaac McCray on the carry. A lot of credit right there to number 97. Did a nice job coming in and making that tackle. Oh, was that but, number, that yeah. was uh, 97 Cam Gagnon. I thought that was 47, Davis Bach. 23 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Second and 12, Bryan at the 38-yard line of Brown. Curtis to pass. They set up the wide receiver slip screen, and it's only going to go down for a gain of two, and that might be the final play of the quarter. Final five seconds tick off the clock, and that will do it. We have played three quarters of football here at Bryant University, and after three, the Bears lead it 21 to 17. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Front covered, bam. Babysitter paid, boom. With Pop Money and Navigant Credit Union, it's that easy. Send and receive money quickly and securely, online or right from your mobile device. No worries, no need to exchange account numbers. Just use the Pop Money feature. To learn more about Pop Money, visit navigantcu.org. Navigant Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. Pop Money is powered by Fi Serving, but is activated through specific financial institutions. Terms and conditions may apply. Life just got easier. My Box of Rhode Island is the perfect and affordable portable storage solution for Rhode Island residents who are moving, renovating, or in a situation that needs a bit of extra space to store belongings. You can pack at your convenience and call us when you're ready to move into a new location. Or you can simply store it at one of our Rhode Island facilities. For free estimates, call 401-597-6400. That's 401-597-6400. Or search for MI-Box of Rhode Island. Proud partner of your Brown Bears. How would you like to be able to listen to us while synced up to your TV in the comfort of your own home? Go to SyncMyGame.com to find out how you can do just that. Back at Burns Stadium in Smithfield, Rhode Island, we have played three quarters of football here today, and the Brown Bears right now clinging to a four-point lead over the Bryant Bulldogs, 21-17. to Bryant with a football in Brown territory. When play resumes, they'll have it third and 10 at the Bears 36, and again, you got to wonder if this is that old two-down territory at the 36-yard line. Well, you're starting to go into the fourth quarter right here, and you're going to have limited time with the football. You only got one 15 minutes left. i got to believe if I'm Bryant and I'm at home right now, yeah, this is four-down territory for sure. How about a big hand for your Bryant University cheer and Bryant University dance team? The problem is this Brown defense has got to figure out how to get off the field right here so they can get there. Offense back on the field. Well, this is a big play right here. Yeah, these guys have played a lot of minutes this half. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Bears 36. Curtis out of the shotgun, takes the snap, back to pass. He has time, he rolls right, and he fires across the middle complete, and it is a first down catch all the way inside the 25 down to the 22 yard line. Freshman Harris, Harris and Oches couldn't yep. make, the, make the play right there. Just too much separation. There's been one Achilles heel in this game here today. It's 
Matt Prochaska made the catch. Ball spotted at the Browns. Ben Brown's coverage line. ability to really kind of play tight coverage. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 22. Firing deep to the end zone, has a man caught, touchdown. Curtis had a man wide open. It was McCray coming out of the backfield. And we have a penalty marker down on the play, so hold on just a moment, it's coming back. Big break for the Brown Bears right there as McCray came out of the backfield. And he's had uh, Medeiros was supposed to cover him. Just a mismatch there, running back on an outside linebacker. Just didn't have the speed to keep up with him on a fly route. No safety help over the top. And I'll tell you, that mental mistake right there by the Bryant Bulldogs on a holding call is going to give the Brown Bear defense another day here. Huge. Wow. Bryant looked like they had just regained the lead, and they have the momentum in this football game, folks. But instead, a holding penalty is going to back them up. They'll have it at the 32-yard line of the Bears where it's first down and 20. Three receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Curtis out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, back to pass, fires it across the middle, and the Bears have that well covered. A gain of maybe a yard on the catch on the slip screen to Prochaska. This is where this defense is really going to dig right into this to the turf right here. This Bryant team just gave you a second life. Huge mistake. Now they're second down and 20. Big, big two downs coming up here. Second down, 19 for the Bulldogs at the 31-yard line of Brown. We have 13.57 to go in the fourth. Bears holding on to a four-point lead, 21-17. Two receivers right, two to the left for Corey Curtis, who operates out of the shotgun, back to pass. Fires down the middle, has a man open. It's caught inside the five-yard line. Anthony Frederick, where it's first and goal to go, Bryant. Wide open on the scene, we're playing zone coverage. Abani's back near the touchdown, and back is in the middle. We left the wide open here. They didn't come across the top here to give support to the fly route, which was wide open. First and goal to go for the Bulldogs. They have it inside the three-yard line of the Bears. And now they bring Dorbor back in at tailback. Curtis takes the snap, hands it to Dorbor. Dorbor running it up the middle, and he's going to be stopped short of the end zone. Kingsley Ijudike in on the stop. Davis back on the tackle as well after a gain of one for Dorbor. Second down goal to go, Bryant at the Brown two. Good job by the linebacker, Ijudike, and back to strong safety coming up. Second down goal to go, Bulldogs now up under center is Curtis. Curtis takes the snap, rolling right, looking for McCray, and his pad is batted down on the play by Jared Dahl. Dahl does a nice job out there as he puts the pressure, gets off of a, the tackle that's all over him, does another good fundamentals, gets that left hand up. He's able to claw the ball down. Big third down here. Yeah. Third down goal to go. Bryan at the two with 13 minutes to go here in the fourth. Bears leading by four, but Bryant looking to change that. Curtis. Operates out of the shotgun. McCray standing to his left. Snap. And it's going to be the quarterback, Curtis, keeping it, taking it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Nice fake right there to McCray. Basically, Curtis faked it, kept it, saw the hole. Linebacker followed McCray out of that inside box, left that hole wide open. Now the Bulldogs with a 23-21 lead, and the point after is still to come to give them a three-point advantage. Snap, the hold is down. His kick is up, and it is good. 12.58 to go in the fourth, and the Bryant Bulldogs back on top of the Brown Bears. It's Bryant, 24, and Brown, 21. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops. And wings. It subs. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day, race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. Brown football brought to you by 
TF Green Airport. Whether you're traveling for business or for pleasure, Green Airport keeps you moving with its convenient location and smooth check-in process so you can enjoy the journey in between. Visit pvdairport.com. Well, you look back at that misconnection between E.J. Perry and Andrew Bolton that would have kept a Brown potential scoring drive alive. And now it is the Bulldogs with all the momentum in this football game, and they have recaptured the lead. It's Brian 24, Brown 21. 12 minutes, 58 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter, and the Bears poised to get the ball on offense in just a moment. Rowley with the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. Jackson and Boylan standing back at their own goal line to receive his kick. Rowley approaches the football, gets his leg into it, high end over end. This will be very much returnable, taken by Boylan at the 5, at the 10, at the 15-yard line, near side 20, and he's going to be wrapped up at the 25-yard line. On Tackled on the play by Ricardo Martinez. And the Brown offense, led by E.J. Perry, will come out and have it first and 10 at their own 25. It's a big series for this offense right now as they begin their season. Now they're down by uh, three on the road. Like you said, 12.52 to go. They need to sustain a drive here. They don't want the clock to start to become your enemy. So Perry and the Brown offense will start this drive at their own 25-yard line, now trailing by three, 24-21, but plenty of time to go, 12.52 left in the fourth. Perry takes the snap out of the gun on first down, back to pass, fires middle, incomplete, intended for Scott Boylan. Boylan was hoping he was going to get a call right there. The middle linebacker had his arm near him, but the ball had been thrown just as he did. It'll be second down and 10 for the Bears from their own 25-yard line. Perry dropping back into the gun once again. Two receivers left, two to his right. EJ back to pass, sets, fires, has a man complete. Demetri Jackson first down, spins out of a tackle and works his way out to the 49-yard line. It's been a great combination today, EJ Perry to Demetri Jackson. Jackson is lipping off right now. Did a nice job, though, catching the ball over the middle, making a nice spin there. It's a little lame as he goes to the sidelines. Dimitri Jackson's had himself a very solid afternoon for this Brown offense. First and 10 Brown. They have it at their own 49-yard line. 12-20 to go in the fourth, trailing by three, 24-21 here at Bryant. Two receivers right, one to the left. Bolton is the tailback standing to the right of E.J. Perry. They're going to give it to Bolton. Bolton up the middle into Bryant territory. Nice strong run there by Andrew Bolton as he takes it down to the 44-yard line to pick up of six. I love that run. Uh, Make it seven. Number 20 is down right here for Bryant. Well, Bolton put the hit on him. That's what I said. He came right down, and Hopgood really came up to make a tackle. And Bolton just lowered his shoulder running north-south, and just you could hear the pop all the way up here. He's going to bring up a second down now for the Bears. They're going to have a chance to go over and talk to their coaches. Vinny Marino, the offensive coordinator, his first game here at Browns, I think is calling a very good game so far. Well, Vinny Marino, another one of those coaches that came to Brown from Bryant University. So for him, probably an interesting day as well, you know, lining up on that opposite sideline when he's been coaching on this home sideline for the past few seasons. Brown offense has moved the ball very well. It really, two minor miscues by E.J. Perry. One on the interception early in the game, and then the other on, on the missed connection with Andrew Bolton here in the second half of this football game. Now the injured Bulldog makes his way gingerly to the sideline. It'll be second down and three for Brown for the Bryant, 44. Andrew Hopgood, the defensive back. After that seven-yard run by Bolton, it'll bring up second down and three for the Bears at the Bryant 44-yard line. 11.52 to go fourth quarter, and Brown trailing 24-21. to But they have the ball in Bulldog territory at the 44-yard line. They're going to give it to Bolton. They'll no, fake it to Bolton. Hand off Perry, and he's got some running room. Perry inside the 20, and he's tackled down at the 17-yard line where his helmet pops off. Going to have to go off 
Not sure how comes off, you have to go off for a play, but what a read he had, E.J. Perry. Great read, he was gonna give it to Bolton. He saw the linebacker step in the hole to grab Bolton. He pulled it out and showed his quickness and speed as he made it to the corner and then turned it up north-south. Just drove this ball inside the 20 to 17. So Perry does go off the field after his helmet comes off. That is a rule in college football. So Mike McGovern in at quarterback. He has two receivers to his left, one receiver to his right. Bolton is the tailback. And now Bolton will shift to the right side of McGovern. McGovern takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Now gives it to Bolton and Bolton up the middle is going to drive it inside the 15 to the 14 yard line before he is driven back. Another nice gainer there by Bolton. Picked up about four and a half yards on the carry. Got to give credit to the left side of the line on that. That hole was huge. As they did some nice blocking. Broom Webster and Barnes, Tucker Barnes, did a nice job. EJ Perry comes back in at quarterback after the four yard gain by Bolton makes it second down and six for the Bears at the Bryant 14 yard line. Perry takes the snap, back to pass, looks, looks. Now he's going to run. He takes it at the 10, at the 5, touchdown, Bears. E.J. Perry from 14 yards out, and the Bears back on top. But hold on a moment. We have a penalty marker down to the backfield. We have a flag right now. And it's a hold on the Bears. It's going to come back. We have another injured Brian Bulldog down on the field. They have had a number of players come up lame here today. There's no question they have. And, you know, E.J. Perry on that run, he went in untouched, but he just went over 100 yards on that last run, and that's the first Brown player to do over 100 yards since Seth Rosenbach, 128 yards versus Columbia wow. in 2015. Wow. Number 67 on the offense, 66, 10-yard penalty, second down. So the hold was on the freshman Zach Harris. Think about that, Scott. And what we've watched today with E.J. Perry, what is to come for the future? Oh. <laughs> Penalty is holding on the Bears. Tough call by the Bears, though. You've got to be disciplined. You're down by three here, Long 10 minutes and 37 to go. You can't be making that hold right there, especially when your quarterback just rushed in for a touchdown. These are the penalties that hurt you. We talk about it in football. Penalties can kill teams, drive you back. Second Instead of a touchdown, now it's going to be second down and 16. they got to get to the eight-yard line for a first down. Jabota Brown, the injured linebacker for Bryant, comes off the field after the holding penalty, which negates the 14-yard touchdown. Second down and 16 for the Bears at the 24-yard line. Double reverse. Boylan trying to run it around the right side at the 20. At the 15-yard line, Boylan running down forward inside the 10, pushing his way to the 7-yard line. Tell you what a grind that was by Boylan to come in and lower his shoulder as a wide receiver, pick up an extra 5-yard line. Yards, and I'll tell you, Lynch, Phil Lynch. It was right Carnival and Harris came in and pushed that pile an extra four yards. And Lynch was out there on the perimeter with a linebacker blocking outside downfield. And how about that? The freshman Harris gets called for the hold, and he's an integral part of that play going for a first down. First and goal to go, Brown. They have it inside the Bryant seven-yard line. Perry looks to the sideline to Vinny Marino for the play call. We're under 10 minutes to go in the fourth. First and goal to go, Brown. Snap to Perry. Back to pass. Looking left. Firing left. Caught. Touchdown. Scott Boylan is second of the game. Scott Boylan wide open on the back side, and it's E.J. Perry who finds him in the back corner to take the Brown Bears with a lead. He was wide open in the back left corner of the end zone, and Perry hit him right between the numbers. 27-24 Bears, and the point after is still to come. You know, we see adversity. We saw the hold call with second and 16, but you just feel the momentum out there that they're going to overcome that, and they did. Boiling down inside the 10 and then a touchdown pass. Now the all-important extra point by Gofridge out of the hold of Mike McGarvin. Snap, hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. And that's a big one because it gives the Bears a four-point lead with 9.49 to go. It's Brown 28, Bryant 24 from Learfield IMG College this is Brown Bears football. 1149 Restaurant and Bar, located at 1149 Division Street on the Warwick East Greenwich Line. 
featuring modern American cuisine with a nod to Rhode Island classics. Open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday and for our award-winning brunch buffet every Sunday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. 1149 specializes in social and corporate events. Private events are also available at our location in Seekonk, Massachusetts. Call or log on to our website for more information. Drop football brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Rhode Island. With three locations in East Providence, Lincoln, and Warwick. There's a Blue Cross retail store near you. Visit today and get more from your health care. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Rhode Island. Nine minutes, 49 seconds to play fourth quarter. And the touchdown pass from E.J. Perry to Scott Boylan. Boylan's second touchdown catch of the day for Perry, his third touchdown pass of the day. Puts the Bears back out in front, 28-24 here at Bryant. That touchdown was so important because it made it a four-point game now. Bryant has to come down and score to take the lead here. Gofrich gets his leg into the football. Good end over end kick. It goes through the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Dawson's been terrific with his kickoffs today. Yeah, you know, he has, and he's taken on the role of extra points and punting. I mean, he's doing it all for us. Well, the Bears had a very talented freshman kicker a year ago, Dylan Brady, and Dylan Brady just decided that he no longer wanted to play football, and he quit the team, and so that put all of the onus on Dawson Gofrich, and he has done a magnificent job today. So the Bryant offense will take over at its own 25, now trailing Brown by four, 28-24, 9.49 to go. Curtis, the quarterback, out of the shotgun with three receivers to his left, one to his right, and a pass deflected by Putman, who smelled the pick six. He read that play all the way. What a great job by the right end right there out of South Carolina. He comes up the field like a lightning bolt, gets his right hand out there. I thought he was going to grab that and go for the pick six just off his hands. They were setting just a little wide receiver slip screen on the near side, and Putman sniffed it out, batted it down. Second down and 10, Brian from their own 25. Curtis out of the shotgun, two receivers to his left, two receivers to his right. McCray is the tailback. He stands to his left. Curtis takes the snap, toss left to McCray, cuts it back up and in, makes the defender miss, and a big run there by McCray. He looked like he was going to be stopped for no gain, maybe a loss of one or two, and instead he turned it into a gain of 9, 10 yards. In fact, they're going to give him a first down. Gain of 11 out to the 36. Iko DK is down. This is the first Brown player we've seen come up lame today as Iko DK, he's, he's, he's rubbing his calf, so I think it's cramps with Kingsley. They'll get some fluids into him and get him off the field. Time out on the field. That's exactly what it is. He shakes his legs off. I mean, it's hot up here, and you know down on that turf, it's oh, got to be really hot. Has to be. You know, McCray did a nice job on that. He had Putnam, on, just about had him in the backfield, but Putnam's momentum was carrying him to the sidelines, and he did a nice job by planting that left foot and coming back against the grain. And Putnam just couldn't stop his body motion to make that tackle. So the result of the... McCray carry is a first down. First and 10, Bryant. They have it at their own 36. Curtis operates out of the shotgun on first down, fakes the handoff, and he's going to run it around right end for a gain of a yard out to the 37-yard line. Who was that that came crashing down on Number McCray? 97 did a wow, great job. Wow, Cam Gagnon just Ooh. buried McCray after they faked the handoff to him. I felt that hit up here. And, you know, you said it before I mean this rotating in 10 guys through this defensive line linebackers I mean really we're seeing different sets of guys every three five six plays fresh legs coming in second down nine for Brian from their own 37 yard line Curtis out of the shotgun back to pass he looks he looks now he's going to be dropped in the backfield he tries to get rid of it and he does for an incomplete pass I thought the Bears had him wrapped up Michael Hoyt was around his ankles Cam Gagnon was there. Jared Dahl was as well. But he somehow, someway was able to get it away, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, I don't know how he got it away because he had the whole defensive line swarmed around him. Ubania almost picked it off. He wanted to pick six, too. Great push, though, by the defensive line there. Big third down right here to get off the field. Huge. 
Third down and nine. Bryant, they have it at their own 37-yard line. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Curtis back to pass. Bears on a blitz. Bryant picks it up, and the pass is complete. First down to Frederick across midfield and down to the Bears' 47-yard line. He makes the catch in front of B.J. Ubani. Just basically does about a seven yard down and in post, comes across the middle. Safeties had cleared out. Obani's on one to one coverage right there. It's giving him too much room. Makes an easy catch over the middle. First and 10, Bryant. They have it inside Bears territory at the Brown 47 yard line. Corey Curtis operates out of the gun with two receivers to his left, two to his right. The tailback Dorbor standing to his right. Snap, pitches it right to Dorbor. He cuts it up inside the 45-yard line, and he's hit down as he crosses the 42. It's tackle on the outside there by Perryman. Uh, cornerback came up and made the tackle, but it's going to bring up a second down, about five yards. Five-yard run on the carry for Alfred Dorbor. Second down and five, Bryant at the Brown 42. Seven and a half minutes to go in the fourth. Brown leading Bryant 28-24. Curtis operates out of the gun. He'll pass on second and five. He fires it down the right side of the field, and it is incomplete. Curtis is passing complete. Tried one-on-one -on, -one on the outside right there. They did a nice little fly route. Tried to lob it in there, but great coverage there by the freshman, Cooper Devo. Does a nice job there of turning his body. Cooper Devo, the freshman from nearby Foxborough, Massachusetts, on the coverage of Hunter Hill. And now it'll bring up third down and five, Bryant, who is undoubtedly in two down territory here, you would think. Curtis out of the shotgun on third and five for the Bulldogs at the Brown 42. Hands it to McCray, wrapped up in the backfield by Elijah Pierre. What a play by E.P. Pierre does a great job right there. Defensive tackle comes off the ball hard and strong to the right side of the guard. He's able to clear his block nicely. Stays right with the running back and wraps him up and just takes him to the turf. Now it's fourth down. They've got a punt here. A loss of five, and you're absolutely right, John. Had there been no gain on that play, you think Bryant would have kept the offense on and gone for it, but now with a loss of five, they got to try to pin the Bears deep and try to manage their timeouts and hope that they can get the football back in decent field position. Danny Gemmel standing at his own 10-yard line to receive the punt of Gavin Rowley. Rowley gets his leg into it. Nice high punt, and... Gemmel lets it go over his head, and it's going to be down at about the five, six yard line of the Bears. So a good job there by the Bulldogs punt unit to pin the Bears deep in their own territory. 6.28 to go in the fourth. Brown 28, Bryant 24 from Learfield IMG College. This is Brown Bears football. Rhode Island Medical Imaging's newest location is now open in Johnston on Atwood Avenue. From x-ray and CT to MRI and mammography, all of your imaging needs are in one place. And with 13 locations statewide, Remy specialized radiologists and patient-focused care are in your neighborhood. For an appointment, call 401-432-2400 or visit us online at remyrad.com. Rhode Island Medical Imaging is the official MRI provider and proud partner of your brown bears. First and 10 for the Bears. Here goes E.J. Perry. He could go the distance. He's at midfield at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown. E.J. Perry <laughs> takes it 94 yards. My goodness gracious. And the Bears now lead it by 10. E.J. Perry comes in. 514 to go here in the football game at his six yard line. We're not sure what Brown Bears are gonna do, but they put it in his legs and off he goes to the races. And how about the rushing numbers now for EJ Perry? 15 carries for 223 <laughs> yards and two touchdowns on the ground. And that's not even accounting what he's done with his arm today. You don't think having a quarterback makes a difference? Wow. What a player. Unbelievable. Unreal display here today. Who would have thought when we came up into this booth that the performance that we would witness out of E.J. Perry? I certainly didn't expect it. Unbelievable. Not to this degree. I knew he was a Perry. I knew he was a Division I recruit, scholarship player at Boston College. But my goodness gracious, to do what he's done with both his legs and his arm, just incredible. 
It's just the leadership. It's unreal. You know, I was thinking as they were coming in, they're going to be on their own six. How's this offense going to react? New, been here, you know, unbelievable. Come out and dart 94 yards. And now Dawson Gofrich to attempt the point after to put the Bears up 11. It's a low kick, but it's up, and it is good. 6-14 to go in the fourth, and the Bears give themselves a little breathing room. It's Brown 35 and Bryant 24. John will keep it here. How about this performance by transfer quarterback E.J. Perry? Listen to these numbers. <laughs> Through the air, 20 of 31 passing for 176 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. And on the ground, 15 carries for 223 yards and two touchdowns. And what we don't see is the unknowns. How many plays that he's made that, you know, he was going to be sacked. He got away from it. Kept Pocket drives hit. alive, yeah. third down conversions. Just did all of those type of things that aren't in the stats that kept this offense moving and putting points on the board. The pass he made to Boylan in that first pass, such a great touch over that back fade corner. You know, you mentioned it. You know, quarterback, as we've gone throughout this uh, this league and we've watched it, you know, quarterback is a crucial, crucial position in the Ivy League. You know, we've watched it through our times. May have been Williams at Dartmouth. And we've gone, we can go down the list of, of, of the ones that have made been X factors to carry teams that little bit extra level they need it's hard to win in this sport without a good quarterback isn't it i yes. mean it's the most important position on the field let's face it after the 15 yard penalty the excessive celebration penalty gofridge kicks off from his own 20 yard line and look at this kick he drives it back into the end zone for a touchback what a great job by dawson gofridge that 94 yard was the second longest in Brown history. Behind only Catchmer at the Yale Bowl in New Haven, Connecticut, where right. he broke Judge Flanders' record. We were there. Wow. E.J. Perry having himself quite an afternoon. 34 yards, fifth in Brown history. Fifth highest single game rushing total in Brown football history. So far. So far, and we still have some football to play. So the Bears, E.J. Perry got flagged for an excessive celebration after his 94-yard touchdown run. So the Bears, instead of kicking off from the 35, kicked off from the 20. Gofrich kicked it into the end zone for a touchback. That's a special teams play right there. Yes, it is. Now the snap to Curtis. He fires it out to the right, and it is caught and running out of bounds on the far side of the field after making the catch. It was number 10, McGovern. First and 10, Bryant, they have it at their own 35-yard line. 6.06 remaining. The clock is running here in the fourth quarter, and the Bears leading by 11. You don't want to play too soft here defensively, right? Not at all. you got to play tough and hard right here. And you want to keep him in bounds, too. You want that clock to continue to run it. You want to make that clock your friend is really what you want to do. You want to keep it running. This defense has just got to play itself right now. they got to play up the field. they got to play strong. they got to play to Curtis. Cannot let this be a soft uh, march down the field for Bryant. Bryant hurries up to the line again. Curtis out of the gun. Empty backfield. Five receiver set. Back to pass. He looks. He fires it underneath. And they've got the first down. A little dump off to the 47-yard line. And the catch is made there by Prochaska. So that'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. Another player have, down now we have Brian. another injured player. It's Prochaska who just made the catch. You know, Scott, you had mentioned earlier in the broadcast that we had only averaged 14 points a game all last year. 35 points. I, I would have never I would have never thought that coming into today that we were going to put this many points up. Incredible. I mean, we haven't seen offense like this from the Brown Bears, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. And again, you, you got to go back to the quarterback position. I mean, E.J. Perry has just been dynamic here today. There's really no other way to put it. And it's amazing is that he just came in to this scheme in August. I mean, he was a transfer, so he couldn't play with spring football. He couldn't be a part of the spring team. And, you know, all of a sudden he comes and has to show up at summer camp like all the freshmen. And, you know, he has taken this offense on and led it like he's been a veteran here for two or three years. Last year, the Bears scored 35 points in their win over Georgetown at home. And that's their high point total for the past couple of seasons at the very least. Curtis passes it out to the near side and running it out of bounds on the near side is Nisabocha. 
Perrin runs him out after a gain of about five to the 48-yard line of Brown. This is where your defense really needs to step up, the defensive line leadership to get to Curtis right now. You know they're throwing the football. The clock is against Bryant. They're down to five minutes. They're down by 10. They need to score and get the ball back. Someone on this D-line has got to make a play. Second down, five, Bryant at the 48 of Brown. Quick pass there by Curtis, and it is complete for a first down to the 41-yard line of the Bears. The catch is made once again by McGovern. McGovern does just a basic 10-yard down, playing soft on our cornerbacks right now, and safeties and linebackers are really kind of playing about 8 to 10 yards off the football, rushing three down linemen really in a prevent-type defense right now. Curtis out of the gun, five receiver set, fires again, and it is incomplete. That one was intended on the near side. Great job Warren. right there by the freshman. Caruso. DeVoe does a nice job. The freshman coming up on that ball. That'll stop the clock and give both teams a chance to catch their breath with 4.33 to go in the fourth quarter. It'll bring up a second and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Brown 40-yard line. Bears leading 35-24 with four and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Three receivers right, two receivers left. Curtis out of the shotgun, back to pass. And he fires it out of the right. And he had an open receiver who just dropped the football. And this Avocia dropped the ball. We were on a blitz on the linebacker on that side. Left him open. Obani had to take the wide receiver clearing into the inside. If he ever caught that, he was off to the races. So now it's going to bring up a third down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Well, they've got two downs here. There's no question about that with 4.30 to go and three they, timeouts. They have it at the Brown Bears 40-yard line. Three receivers right, two to the left. Corey Curtis out of the shotgun, back to pass. He fires across the middle. It is complete. Nice tackle from behind by Ubani on Anthony Frederick. Ubani and Frederick looks like he's hurt. Ubani did a nice job on coverage there. It was a down and in, so it was seven yards, and he came down. Obani locked right on his shoulder all the way down and made a nice tackle. The result of the play is a four-yard pickup, and now it's Anthony Frederick being attended to. Bryant has really been banged up in this football game. We have seen probably, I would say, no less than a half dozen of their players be attended to on the field today. Yeah, there's no question. Mostly leg injuries, too. You know, they, they've come up. With legs, it's, it's like cramping or like he's well, limbing off I think off in that case, needs. Ubani tackled him from behind and maybe landed on you know, the backside of his ankles. He's walking off the field. I think he's okay, and I have a feeling we'll see him more you know, as this game continues. So Meantime, we get the play of the game right here, John, with 4.18 to it. go. The clock will run once the officials wind the clock, but it's going to be fourth down and six for Bryant at the Brown 36-yard line. They need to get it to the 30 to keep this drive going. If not, the Bears take over up by 11. Five receivers, empty backfield, three to the left, two to the right. Curtis out of the shotgun on fourth and six for Bryan at the Brown 36. Curtis back to pass, fires it, and it is incomplete. Ubani nearly intercepted it, but it doesn't matter. The Bears get off the field, but hold on. Do we have a roughing the passer here on Ryan Puffman? Oh, no. The passer. Defense, number 99. Oh. It is not, it is Cal Flanders who got called for roughing the passer. That is a personal foul. That's a that, tough call yeah, right there. I didn't see it. I was following the flight of the football, but that is a penalty you cannot take on fourth down. It keeps the drive alive, and it keeps Bryant in this football game. And it was good coverage by Ubani right there. Latched right onto that cornerback shoulder, almost had the pick. So it's first and 10, Bryant. They have the ball at the Brown 21 yard line after the 15 yard penalty. They fire it near side, and Nisavocia makes the catch, but he's going to lose some yardage on that one. Great coverage there by Ubani, by Muderos, and also by the freshman. Josh O'Feely. O'Feely did a nice job right there. It was his guy, man-on-man -man coverage. He was the first guy there. Bonnie did a great job as well, but nice catch right there. Pushed him back five yards. That's a huge play because the clock is still running right now, and now they're second down and 15. Three and a half minutes to go. The clock is running. Second and 15. Brian at the Brown 26. Bears up by 11 in this one. Curtis back to pass. He pumps. He fires. Has a man open. It's caught inside the 10. Inside the 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown Bulldogs. Wow. Just a post route over the middle, which has been giving Brown problems all day. They're able to find the seam right there between that safety and the cornerback. 
and he does a great job catching and running after the ball. Hunter Hill with a touchdown catch, and hold on a moment. This is still anybody's football game. Now, Bryant will have to go for two right here, down by five after that touchdown catch. They want to make it a three-point game if they can. Another player down. That's Hill, who just had the touchdown catch, and again, I think he's cramping up. They're looking at his left and right calves right now. On yeah. a day like this, it is not uncommon for this to happen. But it does tell you that the Bears are maybe a little bit better conditioned than Brian are. You know, this Bears team, James Perry talks about fast, fast. Everything they do is fast. So they run. They're constantly running in practice. And therefore, you don't see the nearly the amount of cramping with the Brown football players and their legs as opposed to what we've seen here from Brian. I think we've only seen one, really. I think that was DK. Yeah, that was it. But this play coming up right now is a game changer. 317, they're going for two. It gives them within three points. Yep. So a field goal they can tie if they ever get the football back. You hold here. They need to get it back and go down for a touchdown. So this is a big, big play for our defense. So they have the offense on the field going for two. Curtis operates out of the shotgun. He has two receivers to his left. Curtis takes the snap. He wants to run it, and he's not going to make it. The Bears come up with a big stop on the two-point conversion. That is a huge stop right there by this defense. That is a big one. Huge. So now 317 to go. Bryant has all three timeouts remaining. Do they dare kick it off to Brown and give it to them on offense, or do they try to execute an onside kick right here? This is a tough this, I can. You can make the argument for both. You really can. I mean, you're 317, you've got three timeouts left. My gut would be to try to kick it away and put it down to the 25 and see if you can use your three timeouts to to get, uh, you know, EJ Perry's offense and the Brown offense off, off the field and get a kick back because they have been successful passing the ball down the field. I mean, they came down the field here with only about two minutes. They got the ball a little more than five, and they were able to execute. So big, big moment here in this football game and a big decision for first-year Bryant head coach Chris Merritt. Does he try to go for an onside kick with 3.17 to go and his team trailing by five with all three timeouts still left in their pocket? Or does he try to kick it away and he put faith in his defense? The Bears are preparing for an onside kick, and Brian right now is lining up for one as well. So the Bears have their hands team on the field. Jackson, Bolton, and Logie up front. Behind them, Gemmel and LJ Harriet. Gavin Rowley has the ball teed up at the 35, set to try to execute an onside kick. Rowley approaches the ball, gets his leg into it. He gets the high bounce that he needs. It's a loose ball, but the Bears come up with it. Recovering the loose ball was number 39, Allen Smith, the tailback, and the Bears will take over at their 46-yard line, leading by five with 3.16 to go. A couple of first downs here. You can salt this one away. First of all, that was a well-executed onside kick. Perfectly. They got uh, that high him. hop they needed. They got a high hop they needed. That ball was loose. Smith did a great job coming underneath. I'll tell you, my heart was pounding here. It's right near in front of us here that I, I, I thought they had a shot at it. But you're right now, Scott. 316, ball's coming out here. You're going to see a lot right now, this offensive line. I've got to believe EJ Perry running the football or handing it off to Smith trying to grind this clock, make yeah. some first downs. I wouldn't mind seeing EJ Perry run a few here as well. On first down, what's the call here? We have a penalty marker down? A delay game, a timeout a call by Brown. Timeout. Brown. Bears may have been a little disorganized on offense there. James Perry kind of shrugs his shoulders saying, come on, guys, we got to do better than that. So they'll come over and talk to their head coach and their offensive coordinator, Vinny Marino, but better to be certain than to make a mistake on a play like that. You don't want to put yourself in first and 15. You see, the thing here is that we are a hurry-up offense anyway, so we don't eat the clock up. Follow me? We yep. are the ones that are going to run this ball. This clock could easily, in three downs, only tick off, you know, 30 seconds or so because we're fast, as Coach does. We're going to play fast. So... It's going to be interesting to see how the tempo, do, does Coach Perry change the tempo here to try to 
make the clock his friend, or is he just going to grind this thing and say, hey, I'm just going to keep playing the way I play, and I'm going to make first downs, and I'm going to have confidence in my offense. If you're just tuning in, E.J. Perry, Bears transfer quarterback from Boston College, has had an incredible game. He's passed the ball for 176 yards and three touchdowns, but he's run the ball for 223 yards and two touchdowns, included in that a 94-yard touchdown run. Brown leading 35 to 30 here at Bryant with 316 left in the fourth. First and 10, Bears at their own 46. Perry fakes the handoff, keeps it, runs it forward for a gain of a yard to the 47. And the clock continues to run, and right now, Bryant doesn't use a timeout, and they will call one. They will, right with away. 308 to go. So he's going to manage this clock if he can right now. He only lost seven seconds. First yard, timeout. And I think after only a one yard gain on first down, I think that's a wise decision on the part of Chris Merritt to call it. Now he's putting his faith in his defense. They can come up with some stops here. Well, there's nothing like a first down. You know, we call it moving the chains. This offense has got to get a first down here, move the chains, and that gets you another set of four, and that's where you can burn the clock down because you've got your 25 seconds. He's got two timeouts. Moving the chains is so crucial here for the Brown Bears offense. It's not about scoring. It's about gaining that first down. I have to say that this, this Brown Bear team, first game out here, has looked very, very good. They have not given up. They've been sharp. They've overcome some certain things at certain times in this football game. Second down and nine for the Bears from their own 47-yard line. Perry with two receivers left, one to his right, operates out of the gun. He's going to pass on second down. Fires, complete to Danny Gemmel, and he takes it down to the 46-yard line of the Bulldogs. Bryant's going to call its second timeout as the Bears are going to have a third down and two facing them. Isn't that Coach James Perry, the competitor that he is? He's not going to grind the clock out here. What's he do? He puts to the quarterback. He throws a down and out seven yards to Danny Gemmel. Get the confidence that they're going to make this completion. They do. Now they're looking at a third down and really just about a long two and a half yards, but a huge third down to keep this clock moving. Because really, we've only burned off 16 seconds. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, that shows you the confidence you have in your quarterback. When you have a quarterback like EJ, EJ Perry, you can afford to do things like that. Well, that's going to put Bryant down to one timeout left. So if we can catch a first down here, that's really going to put their back against the wall. 3 one remaining in the fourth. Brown 35, Bryant 20. When play resumes, the Bears will have a third down and a long two from just outside the Bryant 36-yard line. Bulldogs have only one timeout remaining. The scoreboard shows two, but they have only one. Snap to Perry. He's going to keep it, and he's going to be hit and stop short. Oh, he's oh! it for a first down. What a play by Perry. Unbelievable. We'll see where the spot is. He ran into a wall of Bryant players, driven him back. He kept his feet moving, spun, and got the first down on his own. He was stopped short, stopped at the 45-yard line, and he just spun to his left and picked up two more in the first down. And the clock continues to run with 2.45 remaining in this one. It was like he hit a brick wall, and he stopped. You thought he was going down, and he didn't. Bears have it first and 10 at the 43 of Bryant. Perry takes the snap. He's just going to hand it off to Bolton, and Bolton's going to take it ahead for a gain of a yard. The scoreboard, for some reason, shows two Bryant timeouts left, but they have only one. They've used two already. They're not calling one right now. He's, he knows he needs, might have to save that one. Huge second down here. Bears are going to use every second of the play clock. It's down to 20 right now. Game clock down to 2.03. They lead at 35-30 here at Bryant as we go under two minutes to play. Perry and his troops up to the line of scrimmage. EJ backs up into the shotgun on second down and 10 from the Bryant 43. EJ takes the snap. He'll give it to Smith again, and Smith is going to drive forward for a gain of a yard or two to the 41-yard line, and Bryant with a minute 42 left is going to use its final timeout. There's their final timeout now for Bryant. So now this 
third down is huge. Yes, it is. You move this, the game is over. You don't give the ball back, it's, it's done. You make this first down. So here's what's interesting here. You're, you're absolutely right, John. A first down, the game is over. They've got a third down and eight facing them. If they decide to pass and it's incomplete, they're going to have to punt the football and hopefully pin Bryant deep, but Bryant will still have a good minute and a half to work with to try to score a go-ahead touchdown. I, or do you get risky and throw it here, or do you just keep it on the ground, chew another 40 seconds off the clock, and punt it to him and give it to him uh, uh, with maybe a minute or so left? The ball is to this near hash mark. I think you put it in E.J. Perry's hand somehow. Sprint him out. I do, too. Pass option, run option. Let him make that decision. I do, too. I, I see think, where he falls. I think with the way Perry has played today, you've got to have faith in number four. Third down and eight for Brown at the 41-yard line of Bryant. A first down will end this football game for the Bears. Fake the handoff. Perry's going to keep it up the middle, and he's going to be stopped at the 41-yard line for no gain. And so now the clock will continue to run. And the Bears can call a timeout with maybe about 55 seconds or so left before they bring their punting unit onto the field. There's 26 on the play clock, 120 on the game clock. So they can get it down to 55, 54 seconds before calling a timeout. That's exactly what they're going to do. Coach Perry is right next to the referee on the far side at the fourth down marker, standing right in his shoulder, ready to give the timeout in about 10 seconds. So the game is not quite over yet, yeah. folks. Bryant's going to get another crack at it. They're not going to have a ton of time, but they're going to get the football back as James Perry calls a timeout with 55 seconds to go as the play clock winds down to zero. Now this is where special teams come in. You know, go for it. His kick is essential here. Can he hasn't he? punted yet today. The Bears have not brought their punting unit onto the field today. And this punt is so crucial because you're only going to look at a differentiation of about 20 yards if he kicks this ball into the end zone. If he can get this inside that 10, that's going to make a long mountain for Bryant to have to climb to come all the way down this field to try to get a victory because they have to score a touchdown because they missed that two-point conversion on that last score. You, you almost don't want to risk a return. Do you angle one toward the sideline here, kick it out of bounds if you're the Brown punt unit. Daryl Jackson is the special teams coach here at Brown. And we'll see what the punting unit elects to do here. 55 seconds left. My gut is you push for the coffin corner, man. You, you don't even try a return. You know they're coming for the block, I got to believe. I mean, Well, if they're not dropping anybody deep, then I would pooch one and let the clock run. Yes, but they're not. They're coming for the block. Yep. Bryant will not send anyone deep to receive the Gofridge punt. They're going to come with an all-out blitz here and try to block this one. So Gofridge just has to get rid of it quickly. On fourth down and eight from the Bryant 41. Good snap. Gofridge gets his leg into it. Little end over end. Can he get it to sit? No, it takes a forward bounce and goes into the end zone for a touchback. That's too bad. Six seconds come off the clock. There's 49 seconds remaining, but the Bulldogs will get it first and 10 at their own 20. This is a big series right now. I mean, Bryant has been successful on the pass, so it's not as if their passing game, Curtis has been able to find receivers open. But this defense is really going to be tested here. These young cornerbacks for the Brown Bears, really it's this defensive line. It's going to be interesting to see what type of scheme Tim Weaver puts in here to come up the field. Is he going to go with three linemen and blitz, or is he going to show four? No, they're going to show three linemen, and they're going to bring in safeties back deep, two of them, and they're going to play six corners up tight on receivers. Curtis with an empty backfield and five receivers, first and ten. Bryant at their own 20. Curtis back to pass, fires middle of the field. Uh-oh, it's caught, and it's a big play all the way out to midfield. The catch by Anthony Frederick. And that's what the Bears did not want to allow to happen. He missed the tackle right there. Davis Bach did. He tried to collapse down on him, and he missed him. 37 seconds, 35. Bryant's got to move here. Clock's becoming their enemy. Yeah, I'm surprised they're not clocking the ball here. Third, 29, 28. First and 10, Bryant at midfield. Curtis fires it to the near side, and it is incomplete intended for Frederick. So that'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go. They're looking so at you've 20. got at least three plays left, I would think. That's about, I agree with you, three plays. That's what you've got. 
If you're the Brown defense, you must keep the play in front of you and preferably inbounds. Second and 10, Bryant, they have it at midfield. They send three receivers to the right, two to the left. Bears up by five, Bryant has it second and 10 at the 50. Curtis back to pass, fires it out right, has a man open, it's caught, and run out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. 19 That's seconds. Savocia, and now there's 19 seconds to go. So they may have play time for another three plays here. You've got to be Brown, you got to be very careful because this is in a zone right now where they can score here. They can throw it deep and get themselves inside that 10-yard line very easy. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the Bears 40. Back to pass, Curtis. He has time, fires across the middle, and it's overthrown and incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, Frederick, but he overthrew him. That's five seconds off the clock right there, bringing you to 14 seconds. So really, you're down to about two plays, depending on where you land in the field right here. If you're the Brown Bears, you're like you said earlier, you need to keep guys in front of you. You need to make the tackle after the catch. You cannot let a catch and run happen here. Second down, 10, Bryant at the Bears, 40-yard line, 14 seconds left. Brown hanging on to a five-point lead. Curtis fires across the middle, and it is caught down to the 15-yard line. Clock stops with 10 seconds to go. Here we are at the 15. They've the got clock's going to go. They've got to clock it right here to give themselves a shot at the end zone, and they do. And now there's nine seconds left. They've got no timeouts. So the Bulldogs have it at the 14-yard line of Brown, and they have a chance to take maybe two shots at the end zone, depending upon how quick they are. They've got to watch that, that post pattern over the middle. Number 13 here to this far side, coming underneath the safety. They've got to protect against it. Second down, 10, Bryant at the 14. They're down by five with nine seconds to go. Curtis back to pass, fires to the end zone, and it is juggled and dropped by Nisavocia. Postman across the middle on the back side. He was open inside. He got the leverage on the cornerback there. We have not been able to defend that. We got lucky there. He it, bobbled no that. No question. He was open, and it could have been and probably should have been a Bryant touchdown. And now the final play of the game. Four seconds to go. Brown leading 35-30. Bryant will go for the end zone on third down and 10 from the 14. Curtis back to pass. He fires, intercepted, picked up by Maderos. And he takes a knee, and the Bears celebrate their first win of the season. What a victory for the Brown Bears as they rush the field. Jason Maderos with the interception over the middle to end this football game. What a game here in Smithfield today. The Bears win it by the final score of 35-30 over the Bryant Bulldogs. We'll take a timeout and we'll be back with the post game show in just a moment. From Learfield IMG College, this is Brown Bears football.